like three sentences in a while. It's a, it's a dreadful language. Probably considerably better language. than the three of us trying to do Spanish. Or German. <laughs> or Spanish. <laughs> or <whatever. laughs> Uh, donde esta la biblioteca? <laughs> beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. You're, you're a cultured a, man, Justin. Yeah, you take a, a beautiful romantic language and you've made it sound like Dookie. There's, actually, there's a, a funny scandal because uh, AMLO doesn't know English, like at all, and refuses to learn it. And it's Basically. like the, the first, uh, yeah, like it's one of the first. It, I, I love that conservatives in Mexico just uh, make. Scandals for the only cool things that I'm with us. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even like o Obama stand suit. It's just like every single time he does something cool, which is once every three months, they make a, a huge scandal about it. And it's like, what? Ugh. I respect not learning English so much for for anyone, really. Uh, yeah, it's um, it 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 really it it. I think it. I think it, the English language, in and of itself, is something that just affects people's uh, thinking and gives them <laughs> brain rot. <laughs> uh, listen, I'm, I'm not gonna sit here and, and say it's anything different from Spanish. I actually, listen, I hate accents. I absolutely hate accents. I, I write in. I write short stories in English because I refuse to use accents. Uh, <laughs> 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 but though I will admit, it's an incredibly stupid language. Just all the exceptions melt my brain, but mm -hmm. both of them are better than French, which combines the worst parts of both. Absolutely. Yeah. I just tack on a bunch of extra letters at the end of the word, and you don't say any of them. <laughs> <laughs> French, oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. So. All right. Um, w welcome to. Well, there's your problem. It's a podcast about engineering disasters with the slides. I'm Justin Rosniak. I'm the person who's talking right now. My pronouns are he and him. Okay, go. I am Alice Caldwell Kelly. I'm the person who is talking now. My pronouns are she and her. Yay, Liam. Yay, Liam. Hi, I'm Liam Anderson. My pronouns are he and him. We have a guest joining us. Guest. Guest, Hi. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Emma Flores. My pronouns are they, them. And I guess in Spanish you could use AJ or if you're feeling like, especially Latinx, you can use Ajax. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a that's a fun debate. The pronunciation of that X, but let's not get into that. Just use mm -hmm. whatever you want. <laughs> and we brought you on to talk about the Tren Maya, uh, yes. seen here in a fun little map. Oh, it's so cute. Looks how like could, how could anything with a map this cute? Yes. Look at the little seal and the little like orca and the guy in the jet ski up by Cancun. It's like it's so nice. How could this be a problem? It's like the whole peninsula is a fun theme park for the whole family. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's a train, and if I've learned anything from memes on the leftist Twitter, it's trains are always good. That's, That's right. right. That's right. Train Absolutely goods. Absolutely true. Uh, and and therefore it's, it's fine. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about Tren Maya. Uh, yes. But, but first. But first, I have to get the fucking drop in order because right now oh, the drop that I have in the here. place of the, the the drop that I have in place of the news one is still There's only one race, the human race. What about NASCAR? Which is only <laughs> tangentially that. related. Leave that actually. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm. We have to record on Wednesdays now. Everything is very confusing. That's yes. right. That's right. Uh, I thought I was gonna get a James Bond drop. I was feeling so excited. <laughs> <laughs> We've had to take him off the board, so... Alright, do you want the actual uh, news theme yes. now? Yeah, yes! Yes! Give, give us the news theme so we do. Alright, alright, fuck, news. Jesus. Alice Caldwell Kelly. More like Alice Caldwell Smelly. Really, huh. there's no call for that kind of that oh, kind of transphobia. So, so much, <laughs> you sweet lady. Please there stop! A, please stop owning me. There was a, a big volcano eruption. Huge. In Tonga. In Tonga. Yes, yeah. very, very large. Uh, about the size of France. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Yeah, it's a, a big ash cloud. Uh, the good news is this is canceled global warming. We're going to have volcanic winter instead. Finally. And yeah. it's not France. That's true. That's yes. this has been the worst gender reveal for like a non-binary <laughs> child. Just gray. Is that, is, 
the non-binary color is just gray. It's just, <laughs> like, it's like a, sack. a layer of ash for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's a day. And it's just like everyone at the party dies with smoke inhalation. <laughs> But the thing is, we d we know so little about what's happening still, which really reminds you that, like, even in this day and age, you can have like geographical isolation because Tonga has one nowhere. one undersea cable which was uh, destroyed by this. Oh. Oops. Yeah, and so it, 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 for a while there, the only communications coming out of Tonga were one guy with a satellite phone. Um, and they had to like physically like sweep the runway clear of ash with brooms and wheelbarrows before uh, before rescue flights could get in. And the worst part about this is that Tonga is zero COVID, um, a status which it probably will not retain just because some UN Oof. motherfucker is gonna give everybody COVID. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Yeah, it's gonna be some some like uh, American anti-vax guy is just gonna come in. So, I will save you, and then, um, and then, and then but, yeah, the guys who deliver Christmas presents for Guam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> God damn! And yeah. I mean, we, we still don't know how bad the the like toll of this is um, because. Like a lot of shit has just been like wiped off the map. Like the shape of Tonga has been changed uh, yes. by this. It's it's real bad. Um, I'm I'm interested to know how this scales in comparison to like Mount Tambora because I know that was that was heard for like three thousand four thousand miles away, but people heard this one in like Alaska. Yeah, no, I don't know. I feel like Mount Tambora was like way more destructive in terms of like the initial death tolls, but uh, well, I mean Tambora was the one that you know took out a whole summer. Um, hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And that's why we have Frankenstein, right? I, I read this one expressed and then how the distance uh, of sound, mm -hmm. like in the only measure uh, worldwide that's accepted, and that is uh, LA to New York. That's the <laughs> only measure. Yeah. Uh, yes. And this fit, so that's all I know about it. I, d I don't like the idea of hearing something thousands of miles away happen. Just in general, yeah. I, d I don't appreciate that. That creeps me out a little bit. But what anyway, can we say so, other than that this is a mysterious act of God's love, right? Yeah, and uh, if we're lucky, snowstorm on July 4th in New York City. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, we're without a summer, baby. Yep. <laughs> um, Nothing's going to come here because Mexico City is basically a valley surrounded by volcanoes, so... Yeah, plus you already have the like insulating thick layer of smog. It's like oh, yeah, uh, exactly, it's like yeah. the bong resin in the lungs that keeps the coronavirus off. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, not exactly off. <laughs> we're, we're having a, a, bit, a little bit of what I call a, a UK or US event right now. Uh, oh no! <laughs> yeah, our numbers are not looking good. <laughs> um, in other news. There's there's well, packages on on the tracks. Failed state, failed state. Yes, it's over. In, Calling in, it now. In Los Angeles. Um, Time of people death. People have been people me have seeing been a package. Stealing things off of trains outside the Los Angeles Transportation Center in intermodal yard, um, and people are seeing this as a, a sign of the imminent fall of Western civilization. I I, I do um, appreciate <laughs> using train theft as a sort of like. Uh, method of prophecy. Um, did you see the most racist thing about this? Uh, uh, the one, well, the one uh, where the lady was like, "I thought this was America, not India." Yes, and yeah. she, and she what? was, she was NPR's India correspondent. What? Look, uh, I mean, past the need for NPR, man. Yeah, but like looking at a thing happening in your own country and being like, "What are we? A bunch of foreigners?" Is, uh, Not a great uh, look. I thought the funny aspect of that was that India has uh, freight trains that don't have to idle outside the yard for hours <laughs> waiting for them to get in. Yeah, India has um, a train system that works. <laughs> yes. um, I mean, I, 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 feel like, I feel like being racist against Indians on Twitter is sort of a self-limiting factor because you will oh, yeah. get subjected to right-wing Indian Twitter, who are yes. absolute psychos. Oh, yeah. And so... Yeah. And, yeah, no. The, 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 so this woman has been like justly punished for her crimes by uh, you know fifteen hundred like BJP guys all doing crying laughing emotes. We should ban the crying laughing emote. That's true. 
I thought what was very funny was Union Pacific issuing a statement that was like, well, organized groups are stopping these trains and I, you know, and they're robbing them. And I'm like, well, yeah, there, there is an organized group stopping these trains. It's named Union Pacific. Um, <laughs> Bold of you to call Union Pacific organized. It's true. It's true. But yeah, no, um, but, all, all know, of these trains are being held up by Dutch Vanderlands gang. <laughs> You know, after, like, after this episode, you might get a combination of those Indian guys with like blue hmm. checkmark lip Twitter. Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Because yeah, the 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 Morena Twitter is just delightful. So it's way smaller. So don't worry about it. You'll you'll be able to handle it. But just <laughs> just warning you. <laughs> Add, adding people to the list of like uh, groups who have caused offense to. Um. But uh, yeah, I, I people sometimes steal stuff off of park trains, and you know that's just the cost of doing business. And trains and losses, baby. Yeah, you can you can put a lock on it or something. Maybe people wouldn't have to steal stuff off of trains if they weren't desperate. Uh, yes. you should do something about that. Maybe if maybe. you want. I don't know. I'm not your boss. Don't talk to me. Shut up. Maybe you could sell the trains to the army. <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to get, that. Yeah, we're gonna get to that. <laughs> <laughs> In further news, this is our first one with three. Yeah, the rare three segment goddamn yeah. news. Um, there was a hostage situation. I appreciate that you didn't spell out God. <laughs> <laughs> as, as a not especially observant Jewish man, that'll make my mother happy. <laughs> my parents are really gonna it's like a, this joke. It's um, uh, it. it there was a hostage situation in a synagogue in, I forget where, Texas? Yeah, Texas. Yeah, outside, um, as well, outside yeah. of Dallas. And mm -hmm. uh, the rabbi managed to uh, throw a chair at, and they at went the gunman. The Damn, and quick time event. Out. Yeah. <laughs> and he, uh, and he then, got everyone out himself. Yeah. But then the brave policeman came in and shot the gunman. Yes. Just executed them. Yeah, we're, we're, we're gonna, uh, well, we've already seen a load of tweets of the sort of, like, girl bossification of the FBI here, because it was the FBI who, who like, broke in and shot the guy. Um, yeah. And so I, I saw this one lib that was like, oh, the, the fucking badasses of the FBI hostage rescue team smoke checked this guy. And I'm like, you don't have to enjoy it that much, dude. Yeah, that's please don't that's that, a, a little uncomfortable. Say this is a Jewish person. Uh, Please don't use us as tokens to hate Muslim people. Thanks. Also, yes. yes. I mean, the thing is, right, the, the hostage taker here was a member of uh, an intolerant minority <laughs> that is an existential threat to the West. And I'm, I'm speaking here, of course, of him being British. Um, yes. <laughs> he was British? <laughs> yes. British. Yeah, he, he had traveled from, from Bradford um, in the to Midlands Houston. to New York to Houston in order to do this. Uh, th there had been some talk, like, in the UK of him having been in, like, a sort of a mental health crisis, which, yeah, yeah, sure, okay, but when I'm in a mental health crisis, I don't fucking go and, you know, hold up a synagogue. Um, but <laughs> you're, you're so welcome. Um, but the thing that he he allegedly <laughs> wanted, his demand, was the um, the release of Afia Siddiqui, uh, who was this um, Pakistani neuroscientist who had tried to, like, do some Al-Qaeda shit. Uh, but Convicted of terrorism, but in some real weird circumstances. Yeah, there's there's yeah. definitely some like yeah, uh, funky some... business going she, on. She, yeah, she, she, she tried to kill the like. Back, yeah, she allegedly tr tried to shoot the soldier with his own M4. Yeah, while he while he was interrogating her, it's like uh, there's a lot going on there. But my favorite detail of this was like, if you're if you're like not familiar with Muslims, you might not know that it's a fairly common thing to say to speak of any other Muslim as like your your sibling. Right, your brother, your sister, and so this guy went into the synagogue and he said he demanded the release of my sister Afia Siddiqui, and oh. a shitload of U.S. media oh, went with, "Holy shit, that's her brother!" Just incredible work, just off the dome piece right. of like background knowledge reporting. I I will say, uh, yeah, I saw uh, a bunch of tweets uh, once and again. Uh, please just leave us alone. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking to the Jewish people. Uh, stop, stop fucking bombing and shooting us. That'd be super nice. Uh, I'm tired of worrying if my parents are going to be turned into marinara sauce when they go to synagogue. Mm -hmm. Uh, fucking sucks, man. 
Yeah. Uh, and also don't, again, don't use this as an excuse to hate Muslim people. No, this use it as an excuse who, to hate British people. This is a guy yes. who pretty clearly wasn't all there, I will say. Sure. Because he also demanded to, t- which again, when I have a mental health crisis, I don't hold up a mosque. Uh, I do hold up churches, though, notably. Yeah. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> problem. Not a hostage thing. I just like yeah. Let's stuff. Let, let, let's merely <laughs> say that um, oh, it, although it's there's only a couple of ways this could have gone better. Um, let's say that the ideal consequence for a mental health crisis is not you get shot in the face a bunch of times by the right. FBI. What the hostages mm-hmm. have already are, are already escaped. Mm. Yes, absolutely. That's the thing. You could just arrest the guy. Yeah. And also, like, it, it pretty clearly seemed like uh, he wanted to die, so congratulations, you've given him what he wanted. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Good job, idiots. <laughs> Damn. This has the, been... Yeah, the, 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 the FBI and a lot of police units in the United States have been gotten way more lethal in the past decades. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Same with Mexican the Army, by the way. They, I think they've, uh, like, they have, like, a 9 to 10, like, execution rate. Jesus. Yeah, That's... they're fucking... Bloodthirsty over here. All right, dude, mm. better than Mexico. Let's hear it, boys and girls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was the goddamn news. Okay, H- here we are. Now we're, 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 we're here in the Yucatan Peninsula. We're here in the Yucatan Peninsula. How did we Peninsula. get here? How did we get here? Well, there was a big meteor that hit somewhere around <laughs> here and, and it killed all the dinosaurs. That's true. Oh. Yeah. That's so why that's, there's cool caves everywhere. Mm. Yes. <laughs> we're, we're here. If you, if you need to sort of broader picture, we're here on the Southern border of Mexico. Uh, yes. you can see Belize on the South. I think, um, is it Guatemala yes. that's, that's next yes, to it? Guatemala. You, you yeah. know what's mm. funny? Yucatan is actually further to the North than Mexico city. Huh? Oh, really? it's yeah. 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 That'll do it. Yeah. Mm. Um, so this is the Yucatan Peninsula. It's part of uh, Mexico, of course. Well, debated. Uh, we, debated. We have here. A, we have here a cool guy in a balaclava who has yeah, some thoughts guy, about that. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a pipe. Oh, he does. He does. <laughs> <laughs> um. So the geology in this area is something called karst, right? So karst is like you have a limestone you know, sort of bedrock. Um, and because of this, it's all worn away by water over time. So you get a huge network of, like caves and stuff, right? Mm. Um, yeah, you have like our, underground water courses and shit. You got underground rivers, right? Like here, here's an example. This is something called a, uh, it's a, a, a cenote. Is it a, a cenote? Yeah. Cenote. Okay. Okay, I don't, I'm not going to know how to pronounce anything during this episode. <laughs> I mean, we're relying on you entirely for that. Yeah. Oh, you for the like, half the time, uh, so, uh, Mexican people correct uh, Americans in pronunciation, they're also lying. Like, oh, it's not Moctezuma, <laughs> it's Moctezuma. It's neither yeah. of them. You don't know now it's <laughs> Shut the fuck up. All right, but a, a lot of places, you know, sometimes you'll hear about underground rivers, and they're referring to a sort of movement of groundwater in a specific direction um, and not like what you might imagine, which is like a big cave with a river running through it. Uh, in the Yucatan, it is actually a big cave with a river running through it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> RuneScape fast travel. Yes. <laughs> and, and as you can see, there's a lot of like uh, rainforest here, right? Like yes. less than there used to be, but... Uh... It's still quite a lot, yes. Mm. So, you know, it's also very flat. Um, you don't have any rivers again, because they're all underground. You don't have any above ground rivers, lots Hmm. of underground rivers. Hmm. Uh, Um, It's also very flat until it's not. Yeah. You can see the, the, the blue mountains here in Chiapas on the bottom left here. Uh, Yes. uh, Where it suddenly gets all like wrinkled up and this, this becomes uh, excellent territory to like hide from the Mexican federal government in. Do an insurgency in, yes. So almost like uh, the Appalachians, you know. Yeah. <laughs> no. I think I think Subcomandante Marcos would be flattered by that comparison, but uh, 
We'll, we'll, we'll get into this when we get into the history. So, uh, first dinosaurs, then dinosaurs uh, killed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, dinosaurs killed. Uh, the, age well, is, so the age of man is it begins. Yeah, man, yes, yeah, so we have the Maya civilization. A grave, a grave, and, and a horrible mistake. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Should be clear that you're talking about humanity there yeah, rather than the Maya, the Maya or the agriculture. Let's go full anti mm. mm -hmm. <laughs> let's, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's reel it back in. <laughs> <laughs> So some of the earliest archaeological evidence of the Maya starts about 2000 BC. They, you know, they have they have a civilization up until around the 800s AD. You know, they got the big cities. They got sophisticated what do you mean trade. A -C -E? I what? B C E uh, or C C E common era? No, I'm 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 I've AD? decided to use. No. The Christian terms. Uh, oh, this is no. A Christian oh no! Oh no! Fucking <laughs> Father Bernardo de fucking Rosniak here. Yeah. <laughs> Father Guido Sardouchebag, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah, I'm saying is, if ever there was a place that would like have a justified objection to using Anno Domini, it might be the Yucatan. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Roz. Um, so they got their big cities, they got you know trade, they got big stone monuments, written language, stuff like that. Around the 900s AD, oh. or CE if you prefer. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Right. Um, you know, there's sort of this uh, decline in the civilization, like this sort of, of events occur, which I don't think we're fully. I'm I'm not familiar with them. No, uh, there's a, there's, least, a, yeah. there's a lot of things like these in like Mesoamerican civilizations yeah. where sometimes they'll just collapse and we're not sure why because there's no surviving I mean, records. The, 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 I mean, we're getting better at understanding yeah. that kind of stuff. Like, uh, I don't know the the there's. The 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 I'm sorry. Uh, no, it's not okay. architecture, archaeology. The archaeology is mm, evolving. Yeah. Uh, historians are are piecing stuff together. It helps that there's a lot more you know indigenous historians. So people instead of going like, oh, the Mayas disappeared because the aliens came and sucked them out in UFOs. <laughs> they're like, oh no, the Mayans <laughs> yeah. are studying themselves. You're sort of like, um, you know, a uh, white archaeologist kicking a bunch of Spanish massacres under a carpet and going, what, yeah. what happened? Impossible well, to say. Impossible to say. Or, 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 or saying that the massacre, they actually deserved it. Like, there's like mm -hmm. this yeah. huge thing about the Guerra de Castas. It was like a popular revolt, not only racially motivated, but mm -hmm. like uh, an actual like popular revolt, because like Yucatan is based as fuck. <laughs> and uh, but a lot of the historians of the time just said, "Oh, it's just Mayas versus white people," and yeah. uh, to brush under the rug because back then you could say we killed them because of racism, and that was a good thing. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, it just another two levels of of historical revisionism and racism. You you, you need to understand to to get how Yucatan got to where it is. Mm. Well, I think a lot about the because, um, like, obviously, uh, just, you know, six hundred years after this first big decline of the Maya, we have to talk about the Spanish yeah. conquest, right? And like, yeah. one of the things that really made a big difference to me uh, was I, I read this book, uh, "Myths of the Spanish Conquest." Mm. One of one of which was uh, the Spanish Good conquest. Taste. Thank you. What, what the, like the one that really struck me was the Spanish conquest was a thing that like had a defined endpoint. Rather than uh, it set off a bunch of historical processes which are still going, and there were people who were like, you know, retained their autonomy from Spanish rule much longer than anybody gives them credit for, and that's especially true oh, yeah. down here. Yeah, like the, the looking at the our handsome fellow with a pipe. Like mm -hmm. one of his yeah. points is yeah. uh, Amlo, our president Andres Manuel López Obrador, apologized to the Mayas for all the atrocities uh, they've committed, and the. The Esetalene, the the the, the Esetalene, what, what kind of pronunciation I'm having? Okay, so the Zapatistas basically said, uh, "How about you stop doing it? Like, how about you, <laughs> would you end the, the conquest? <laughs> how about not? Because uh, <laughs> yeah, like every time the jungle contracted, so did the people. So the people flee into the hills, literally, and uh, escaping slavery and shit, and that." Kept going, just kept going, like in the whole uh, Yucatan, in Chiapas, in Campeche, Tabasco, and uh, yeah, like <laughs> it started with the Spanish, and 
like you can see uh like listen a bunch of people are surprised when they see pictures of our past presidents like Enrique Peña Nieto who's white as hell and uh and is you might notice that all of them have Spanish names like mm, <laughs> yeah Weird. Wonder how that got there. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's no understanding of like the racial politics of Mexico outside of Mexico. I think. Oh, but there's barely any yeah. inside of Mexico. So, <laughs> <laughs> one of the effects of the the pre contact collapse was a lot of uh, Maya civilization sort of moved up north, right, mm. um, to the Yucatan, right, uh, and then in 1511, of course, uh, first contact was made with the Spaniards. Um, and a local Mayan lord who, who made contact with these Spaniards, I think they had been shipwrecked, made the correct decision and decided to sacrifice all of them. Yeah, good move. Good move. Yeah, good idea. You, 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 you guys, guys show up in the weird sort of like uh, curvy helmets, you just kick them into a sonata. That's, you know, that's good policy. Oh shit, these are Spaniards. I don't well, know. No. <laughs> that's the correct response. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, two of them got away though. Oh, and, yeah, what a mistake. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and so you know, conquistadors sort of come in. They do the usual conquistador thing, right? Uh, and you know, all of modern Mexico is under Spanish control by like sixteen twenty seven. But the Mayans don't really go away, mm. right? As because sure. they're it's so remote out here that there's no control. Yeah. People and can also. Sort of, <laughs> If if you're a Spanish fail son who like wants uh you know to sort of live in a big fancy palace right you don't want to do governing you certainly don't want to go out into the fucking countryside to oppress people yourself and yes. so it becomes sort of possible uh to like make deals with the with the Spaniards like for better or worse that yeah, are, and like, that especially yeah. happened in Yucatan because there's like a lot of different ways the conquista looked uh, around the, the country. And a lot of different interactions with groups, like half the the, the names uh, that we use for indigenous groups in Mexico are just slurs used by the the Aztecs. <laughs> like just <laughs> nice. And and you can tell that they were in charge uh, after they got like completely destroyed, and after the, the the plague and stuff, a lot of them got put in charge, got new Christian names, and like some shit like Jose Castillo, the whatever the fuck. And uh, just got sent to, okay, go to Yucatan. And Yucatan was a tough nut to crack. Uh, and when they did it, they found out they could just, they, they would need to learn uh, at least a, a, a version of, Na of Mayan. Hmm. And that continued up until like a hundred years ago. Wow. Like uh, the, 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 the elite was talking Maya. That, that's kind of unheard of in a lot of conquered, uh, conquered places. And uh, that's part of the, the, the Guerra de Castas thing. Like, they say, it, oh, it's just Mayas versus non Mayas. And, like, no, just a lot of those quote unquote Mayas were just guys who learned Maya. And a lot of uh, elites were like Mayas who got appointed by the Spanish. Hmm. Who were like a safe hmm. pair of hands because they would, yeah. like, deliver the resources that the Spanish wanted. Yeah, and without when the, the them independence work. happened, they just said, okay, now I'm Mexican, I guess. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And so. Uh, Mexico becomes a country in like 1821, right after the, the War of Independence. Uh, the state of Yucatan sort of, they flirt with independence, but they, they, they try and go to be the Republic of Yucatan, and then they're forced back into Mexico, I think, in 1848. Yeah, um, and that turned out extremely well for, for the independence, because they armed a lot of their uh, people and taught them how to use weapons, and that, that never... Uh, Causes any social evil, <laughs> right? Yeah, um, and then you have uh, you know you have your the the Mayans in the area. Um, there's there's a sort of concerted effort to um, do away with a terrifying concept which uh, white people hate, which is collective ownership of land. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Don't speak it aloud again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and 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 so the the Maya were pissed. Um, they form a breakaway state with a capital at Chan Santa Cruz. It's like somewhere around here-ish, I want to say. Yeah, we'll see it in the yeah. map soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and that sort of kicks off something that we call the Caste Wars now. It's like the simmering conflict 
that goes from about 1847 to 1902. Uh, Damn. Yeah. Um, British Honduras, which is now Belize, recognized their independence and would, you know, trade with them, right? Uh, But no one else does that. And then British Honduras is trying to improve relations with Mexico as of, as of 1893. So they stop recognizing them and stop trading with them. Oh, and, you know, shit. Is, yeah, I know. Right. Well, you can't trust the British. That's, That's true. Right. I'm always saying this. <laughs> um, and this, this sort of long simmering conflict sort of, it simmered down a bit um, during and after the Mexican revolution. Um. Mm. That's, well, you have like differing ideas of what a what a United Mexican States can be, right? Yes. And uh, like some people think that oh, maybe the the problems that Yucatan has had foisted upon it by uh, by Mexico can like be solved if Mexico becomes more, you know, socialist, maybe. And then yeah, guess, a lot of people get shot. Is the yeah. thing? <laughs> yeah, yes. so you have to realize that like we're approaching the time where the Russian Revolution happened. Like people yes. were were looking and saying that looks kind of nice. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and um, they were sending representatives. There's, uh, I'm not gonna spoil anything for, uh, in case we we get there, but like they were sending like, uh, hi, Lenin sent me, and I mean this picture for no reason. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, uh, another uh, uh, an issue in the Yucatan is they had a a, a very monocrop economy, which we're going to talk more about later. But there's this thing called henequen, which is this type of agave, not so good for tequila, but very good for making rope. Mm. Um, and that made a lot of people very very rich. Um, I assume that was all distributed equally. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> No, because they were farmed on haciendas, which are plantations, right? And they mm. they don't have slaves, but they do have workers in debt peonage, which is, you know, very similar. Uh, <laughs> some of them had just slaves, because uh, haciendas are really? very diverse. Oh, uh, okay. You, in, like, yeah, the, <laughs> the depending on what you were planting, a hacienda could be anywhere, anything from, like, just a boss and a bunch of farmers to a plantation, like, that would exist in Georgia, to the latifundia st- t- style things that they had in Rome. To I don't know, it's it was wild. Mm. Mm. So uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying that these were the woke haciendas, but they yeah. were not the absolute <laughs> worst uh, slavery ones. But some of them right. did get uh, pretty fucking bad. Mm. And then. Okay, I, I, I wrote down modern history here. Yeah, what, what, what happens is that history continues to occur. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I always thought it would end. No. <laughs> no, no, y- y- Yucatan is like sort of held under the boot of, of, of central government uh, until... After the, the coup sponsored by the US. Mm-hmm. Yes. Until we get to talk about... Our special boys, our friends, the Zapatista Army of National Liberation. Yes. Uh, one of whose guys, Subcomandante Marcos, is seen here and is as our friend with the pipe, right? Mm. Actually, he's uh, it's super Subcomandante Galeano. Please do not dead name Galeano. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> he's been through a few names. When he was standing for election, he was like Delegado Cero. Uh, he's like he keeps that changing. That was so it. edgy. I fucking love Delegado Cero. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is the Zapatistas' deal, right? Like. Okay, so the Zapatistas were, uh, like, they started as, like, a bunch of guys that had a little bit of contact with other leftist groups, like with, uh, with Fidel, with uh, uh, some folks in Colombia, in a bunch of, like, the generalized guerrilla vibe that was happening in Latin America at that time. And they were, a bunch of them were Maoists, they were, like, fully preparing to go full people's war. And uh, hmm. they decided to go to the jungle, and they got, they trained and stuff like that. But uh, they they had like to 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 adapt more than they could just impose the review. Like they, like uh, if we want to keep them in the terms they probably used at that time, they they had to actually use the mass line and like adapt and and slowly abandon some of the stuff they they were using there's like a, a couple some uh some of the original founders uh 
recently resurfaced and accused the Zapatistas of not being Marxist enough. And it was like really some fucking <laughs> shitty Twitter discourse, honestly. What a, and, good, uh, what a good tradition to return. Yeah, yeah but the, it's, the, it's, it's, the reason it's like, they're not Marxist hmm. is because they decided they needed indigenous leaders too. Like it just couldn't be this, uh, like, yeah, okay, the guy with the pipe is handsome and all, and he's like pretty good at writing, but he's not from around here. He yeah. came. And, and uh, that's, yeah. that's why he's Sof Commandante, yeah. is because uh, he's, he's subordinate to like a governing council that's indigenous, right? Yeah, who are actual commandantes. I am commandantes. Like, uh, the, 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 another thing was they got, they really pushed uh, stuff like women's rights. And hmm. LGBT rights, like recently, like the 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 delegation they sent to Europe was led by a trans person, hmm. the uh, one of the wow. one of the actual like delegadas uh, delegadas, like they used like even I'm I'm, I'm not sure if it's a neo pronoun because they've been using it since the nineties. They, they have a really nineties vibe in their in their. I love it. It's, it's <laughs> it, it really shows when they came on the scene. They try to implement some. They're they really like the cards. Uh, they mm. have really close ties to them, and uh, they also re really like like Chicano movements in the U.S. And like, if you meet any immigrant in the U.S., you know half of Mexicans that immigrate there are queer by year three. So <laughs> there's a lot of uh, of back and forth, and it was a revolution that started at, in the end of history, like. Hmm. Uh, it oh, was right. the, the end of history. NAFTA was passed, right? Yeah, that, that, yeah. that's not a coincidence because <laughs> the biggest effect of NAFTA in Mexico was uh, a, a big hit towards collective ownership of land, the Ejido system. Yeah, and I mean, like, I I, I appreciate the uh, the Zapatistas not least because they have this sort of like internationalism where they get everywhere. Like, and oh, sure, we, yeah. as we were talking about before we started recording, uh, like just reaching out to pretty much anybody who's who's like within that framework of like a sort of like a nationally oppressed people, whether that's you know in Northern Ireland, whether that's in the Basque Country or Rojava or like wherever else on a sort of a socialist basis. Yeah, no, um, they they are not. Uh, that sectarian, like they they are not fans of. They're kind of sectarian sometimes here. Like if if you go there and say and try to convince them to become a Vanguard party, they're probably gonna give you a wedgie. <laughs> uh, it has happened before. I've been in those meetings, and they do say, "Get get the fuck out, nerd." Uh, but they're not like gonna not talk to you. Like <laughs> they. So they the, uh the, the, they they launched this uprising right in Chiapas in the eighties, uh, same day that NAFTA was founded. They still control a bunch of the state, right? Oh yeah, and they expanded recently. Uh, hmm. the, that's why there's also conflict. They expanded recently and uh, founded new caracoles. That's how they call their their communities. Uh, and uh, so overnight, like they had like a forty percent territorial expansion. Uh, I mean, of, of course they, they they've been like uh, fostering those communities for a while, but the the government found out that day, <laughs> and that was a that was a fun day. <laughs> well, yeah, you you step outside of and like all of a sudden there's a big fucking Che Guevara mural up. Everybody's yeah, listening to Rage Against the Machine. Everyone's wearing the balaclava. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just like what the fuck. But the really other thing cool. that we have yeah. to talk about here, yeah. and the thing that I've put uh, opposite, on the opposite side yeah. of the Yucatan Peninsula, yeah. uh, with no relation to geography, is spring break in Cancun. Because oh, like, a, a huge <laughs> driver of economy in the Yucatan, uh, both yeah. in the form of, we just go and party, or, alternatively, we go and we look at like uh, archaeological sites and then we go and party. Uh, whether you do yeah, that yeah. in like Cozumel, or Tulum, mm -hmm. or Cancun. You could probably do both of those simultaneously. Absolutely. Um, you, you, yeah. you too can drink a load of awful tequila, fall off a Mayan step pyramid, and find your soul being sacrificed to Shakmal. <laughs> right now, I think uh, the flow of Cancun to one of the areas if, of interest, uh, which I think it's, it's Calakmul, I think, uh, is like there's 12 million people in Cancun yearly, mm. and 40,000 of them go to, to Calakmul. The, the, so the government came up with an interesting plan to increase that 3,500 times. What so if, they want, what if they instead want of drinking 30, on the they beach? Want 20%, yeah. They want 20% of Cancun visitors to visit uh, 
barely underfund, very underfunded archaeological site. I mean, I kind of, I, I do sympathize to the extent that, like, you have, uh, you know, thousands of years of history and culture, and uh, what people want to do instead is get drunk on the beach. But, like, uh, I'm not sure that, like... Hmm. I'm gonna turn everything into as miserable an experience as the Vatican museums are. Um, <laughs> you've been holding that grudge for so fucking long, dude. Cancun is like an ecological disaster, and like people who work there, like people say, "Oh, where, where did all the Mayans go?" Well, they, they're your waiters at the at the hotel, and they're forbidden yeah. to talk in their native language. Like that's uh, uh, that's a uh, uh, strike in the hotel just happened like a month ago because they were they were fed up. They uh, they were being forced to speak Spanish. Oh my god! Or or English, <laughs> even worse. Yeah. So that's that's our little, like a that's... sort of potted history of the Yucatan. Now yes. we got to like uh, uh, hand I, over I, to I, the Justin zone. Yeah, I'm, I got two slides where I'm gonna nerd out for a second. Please, please. Uh, <laughs> this is what. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we have to uh, for some context, we got to talk about uh, Mexican railways, the the railway system in Mexico, right? Um, and Here's some Zapatistas on the front of a steam locomotive. Looking good as hell. I know, right? Uh, I, I couldn't quite figure out what the actual source of this image is, because some people say Pancho Villa is on here, and some people say, no, he isn't. Um, That's how you know that you're a successful revolutionary, is that like, people are still arguing whether or not you were in photos doing something yes, cool. Yeah, exactly. Pancho Villa was a bit uh, problematic, but... He is one of the few Mexicans who invaded the U.S. So I'm just saying. <laughs> so, uh, it also has my favorite set of last words, which are oh, yeah. depending on whether you think them either tragic, comedic, or tragic comic. Where uh, he he gets shot and he says, uh, "I don't let it end like this. Tell them I said something." <laughs> <laughs> So your, your your first railways in Mexico were chartered in the 1830s under Maximilian the first, right? He was sort of um, emperor. We have a Habsburg. I'm, so, yep. I'm so glad we get to join in with the club. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they didn't act. They, they chartered it. He chartered it back then, but the construction didn't begin until 1864. You know, three years from when he was going to be executed. So not mm. not very not very good there. Um, that was a line from Mexico City to Veracruz. Uh, most railroads were funded by either European or American interests, right? Some of them were straight up American railroads, like uh, the line on the West Coast was the Southern Pacific to Mexico, right? Um, not even put it, not even putting the first part in Spanish. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, we'll we'll get to that later, uh, or at, later in the slide. Uh, other others were segments of American railroads that passed through Mexico, like the San Diego and Arizona also known as the Impossible Railroad, and future episode. Um, <laughs> so, the, uh, the Mexican railway system was pretty underdeveloped until the creation of uh, Nacionala de Mexico under uh, Porfirio Diaz. Yeah, we got to talk about Porfiriato, because this yeah. is like, uh, <laughs> you have a Habsburg, right? But then you also have a sort of like, I don't even know if I have a good comparison for Diaz. I'm like, really curious what, what you were going to ah, say. This is the thing, like, you have someone who's like instinctively authoritarian, um, who has to be the like guy on the horse in the uniform, but oh, who yeah. is also gonna like drag the economy kicking and screaming into modernity for better and for worse. Oh, because um, he was a massive Francophile. Hmm. He yeah, absolutely yeah, so, loved the French. So well, you have yeah, to have like, Mexico a sort of, like, City is Art Deco. Yeah. Of him. Ooh. Wow. It's actually pretty cool. Like I, I, I think it looks great. Like <laughs> <laughs> it's it's very it's just like this re relentless commitment to like uh technological and economic and co like total transformation of, oh, yeah. of Mexicans as a people. Uh it's like this huge project and he like gets done a surprising amount of it. Oh yeah, and he like he basically uh, made the the whole hacienda thing way worse. The <laughs> the the Anakin stuff got way worse during his time. That's why that's why it lasted a hundred years. The Guerra de Castas or or the Guerra Social Maya, because uh, 
like people kept kept doing stuff. Like again, how how I mentioned that the the Zapatistas reminded them like this shit has been going on pretty much nonstop. Like America declaring war on the world, kind of nonstop. Yeah. <laughs> it's the forever war. Yeah, it is colonialism interno, the the internal colonialism. Yeah, I mean, for, like yeah. di- for for both uh, you know compliment and insult, Diaz is a liberal, like to his oh, bones. Yeah. Oh yeah, he he was a massive fan of uh, Benito Juarez, who was the one who shot uh, Maximiliano in the in the head. Pretty cool, <laughs> uh, or in the heart, I think. Yeah. So he actually rebelled against him like a couple times, but uh, he kind of pasted over that and elevated him to uh, to 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 national hero. Uh, he liked to talk about how he was the first. Indigenous president of Mexico, a thing that has not been repeated since, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and Juarez was the liberal, like he he was the biggest liberal, and uh, Porfirio liked that, but also liked like a little bit of you know giant uh, monopoly, giant state formation, you know the kind of he he was really trying to be hip with the times, like mm. be a little, he he was not the Habsburg, but he probably like. Approach more of the the current Habsburg style, like of Holy Roman Empire type shit, like mm. post Prussia type shit. But because he was a modernizer, he loved railroads, right? Oh, this is true. Yeah, he yeah. um he, he and that's why the uh, railways were nationalized under um his administration, and and you know, so Nacionales de Mexico de Mexico was uh, uh you know tasked with massively expanding the railway network in Mexico, um and also. They it, it, uh, turning it into a sort of coherent railroad system, and also providing social services by rail, which is I I, I always thought was interesting. Civil so, lines, yeah. Uh, but down here we see this is a boxcar. It says Fera Tienda uh, Canasupo, right? What this is is a rolling grocery store. If huh, your awesome. community was too small to have a brick and mortar grocery store. Uh, the train would drop off this boxcar once a week, and there was a guy who lived in there, and he would sell you groceries. <laughs> See, th- this is this is <laughs> like Puriato uh, Tutti, right? So you have like on the one hand you have progress in the form of the train car full of groceries comes to your town. On the other hand, you have order, and it's like if you say anything bad about the train car that comes to your town, we will shoot you in the fucking head. And you yes. can't get, get groceries. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. And, and Porfirio is like the the preferred avatar for like the alt-right weirdo in Mexico. Like, oh, of course he fucking it's is. just that would make all sense. over the place. Like, uh, well, we have some guys who, who use classical statues. Like, you, it's so fucking cringe. How can you be Mexican and say, and like, quote Sargon of a cat? Who even fucking <laughs> does that in yeah. 2022? <laughs> they had some, uh, they had hospital trains as well. They had, a, there was a very extensive passenger network. Um, this, Sorry, was this, this idea designed by us? <laughs> I was like, is there oh, there's a social service you need? Put it on the train. Put it on the train. It comes well, to you. Um, <laughs> and this nationalized network, it sort of provides, you know, passenger and freight services for 50 years. And in the late 80s, the government was sort of interested in modernizing and electrifying parts of the network. And that started with a line from Mexico City to Guadalajara, right? And they put up uh, electrical wires for electric trains. As far as um, Santiago de Querétaro, how, how do I? Ah, Querétaro. Querétaro, okay. And they started running electric freight trains. This is the most modern freight system in Yeah, that's the, the thing about Porfirio. He American was serious country. about being modern. Like, yeah. he was producing his own guns, and they looked like modern guns. Like, he, he was oh, a the real... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm just a brief, brief gun uh, diversion. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, how often does this happen yeah, in the show? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, the train nerds. Yeah, the gun nerds. So, <laughs> so this was the, you knew this was a good project because the World Bank issued several very strongly worded letters against it. Hey, um, don't, <laughs> hey, hey guys, don't don't do that. Hey. We stop hurting our feelings. No electric trains in North America. We only Please. want trains that. The travel between slave haciendas. Please yes. do not use electricity for this. They had some signaling issues, though. Just some teething issues, which resulted in two head-on collisions in two months, which destroyed six brand-new locomotives and killed eight engineers and conductors. Um, 
I'm 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 gonna go fucking like Operation Gladio on this mm-hmm. and go. There's there's a World Bank guy with a like a brick of plastic explosive behind uh, this. Like, Gladio stuff starts <laughs> happening way later. But there's a lot I, of blue guys, so yeah. don't worry about it. I I have wanted to do an episode on this one for a while. Unfortunately, a lot of the information about it just disappeared from the internet recently. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> Which supports Surely your Gladio co- idea. Surely <laughs> coincidental. So this is sort of coupled with 90s sentiment against, you know, government-owned enterprises prompted the government to privatize the uh, Nationales de Mexico, Mexico. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they sold it off in portions to mostly two companies. One was called Ferromex, which was owned by Grupo Mexic- Mexico and uh, Union Pacific. And the other company was Kansas City Southern de Mexico. Right now, oh, oh, yeah. um, which is obviously owned by Kansas City Southern, which is now being merged into Canadian Pacific. Wow. So, so, so Canadian so, Pacific de Mexico. This is this is the nineties, right? Yeah. De Mexico. <laughs> so if if this is the nineties, this is just in time for for NAFTA, right? Surely a time yeah. when, uh, since we're opening a shitload of Mexican factories, you want to have a shitload of Mexican trains to bring Mexican goods into the United Shut States. Shut the hell you up! Damn else. well, don't want them to be run by the government. This is also <laughs> when you know the uh, the rolling grocery stores stop. All the passenger trains were were stopped. There are no inner city passenger trains in Mexico. The, the government uh, instituted a policy of fuck you, buy a car. Um, <laughs> um, and um, yeah, so the, the privatization, and the first thing that Kansas City Southern de Mexico did when they inherited this new electric operation, right? Take down pulled, all the fucking wires. They pulled down the wires yep. and put diesel locomotives on so they had clearance for double stack container trains. <laughs> uh, <sighs> yeah. I bet so, that also didn't have to do with the fact that the uh, the electricians union in Mexico is way more left leaning than the than the Pemex union, the oil union. I bet that, that didn't that have anything do to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this brief history of uh, uh, nationalists in Mexico, but we also have to talk about railways in the Yucatan. Mm. Oh, uh, seen here in this nightmare map. Oh dear. So this is. This was something I went into a real research hole about. Um, and I gotta, <laughs> <laughs> this would be a good idea I'm for excited. an episode. I, I, I knew, you, I knew you would do this, yeah. yeah. So uh, I got to credit here um, a, a tram website by Alan Morrison, um, which I'll link in the description, and Alan Wells in the Hispanic American Historical Review. I will also link that in the description for a lot of this information and some of these pictures as well. Um, oh, also some I pictures think... I got from uh, uh, Jose Coyoc's Twitter. <laughs> I'm gonna. I got permission, and <laughs> I'll, I'll link. Good Twitter. Yeah, pretty cool so guy. We have uh, uh, so in 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 the Yucatan, you have uh, you know you have haciendas, right? As we mentioned before, uh, growing henequen, which is a type of agave, which you can distill, but it's usually for rope. Um, and oh. you know, rope for. I think you Mar- clarified that you could distill it. I oh yeah, if you want tequila, go to tequila. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's in the name. Uh, you 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 can distill anything if you're brave enough. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's chemically mm. true, but psychologically. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, this is rope for maritime and industrial applications. And during the Spanish American War, the price of henequen soared to twelve cents a pound. That made a lot of people very very rich. Mostly hacienda owners. Oh, how convenient! Uh, you know, because it is an extractive plantation system, right? Mm-hmm. Um, a, a system of railroads and a use of railroads we're very familiar with. If you take the thing from the resource location and you put it on a railhead and you move it to a thing, and you move it to yeah, a warehouse. You, you, and, you have yeah. the sort of the extractive pattern of railway development, which is like you go to the extractive industry to the port, you know, and you you pay no heed to communities or anything like right. that. You know, this is not like a railroad for you to go visit your grandmother. This is a railroad to bring the shit to the port. Or um, bring your grandmother. Mm, uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, Grandma Cole. <laughs> <laughs> she burned so bright. So uh, a lot of these hacienda owners built these small tramways, right? Um, and uh, that was to transport the Hennequin to ports or railheads of the uh, narrow gauge railroad we'll talk about in a second. Um, and because 
this stuff was so valuable all of a sudden there was a bunch of speculation and massive profiteering right and this resulted in the sort of comically overbuilt tramway network here um by the 1930s in the region around uh merida is it merida, merida? Yeah, yeah. okay merida really fine. there's uh there this was the densest railway network in the world really? Jesus. Cool. yes <laughs> three thousand kilometers 3600 kilometers excuse me of these small tramways which was more more track than the rest of mexico combined um that's fucking sick dude yeah and so these little these little narrow gauge tramways you know they they carried all kinds of stuff you know they carry it, 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 mostly you know your uh your hennequin but also uh you know people to go work the fields, they'd carry random goods, you know. Uh, most of the cars they ran were informal one-offs, you know, you just sort of had a platform with some wheels on it, but... Yeah, you throw a thing together, like the local, like, blacksmith does the, something the, for the you. The kind of exactly. Looney Tunes thing where you just uh, move the lever up and down? Yeah. <laughs> I love my DIY railroad. Yeah, I, I, most of them were like, they, they were either powered by, like, small gasoline engines, or you had a, a, a donkey pull it. Um, but if you were a hacienda owner, you also use these railways and you got something fancy. So like down here in the corner, we see, uh, this thing captured one of the really nifty streetcars of the Yucatan. This was built at beautiful 6200 Woodland Avenue, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, huh. at the Brill yeah. Trolley Company. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> it's right down the street from me. Um, <laughs> Hey, yeah. Do you want, do you want to read your, your, your full yeah. address out yeah, on the air? Exactly, no. Hey, hey, Justin, the... Justin, question now. What, what's your social security number? Mm. I used to have <laughs> your social security number, and I That's don't anymore. Yeah. Uh, so, anyway. Don't worry about the that. Hacienda, You're so you know, this is, a, this is a Hacienda economy. Is a, you know, it's a, it's a monocrop economy, so it's not very robust. It's, um, so... You can't even day. make good alcohol out of it. It's just a cash crop. Yeah. You don't need to yeah. make good alcohol, you just need to make alcohol, bud. <laughs> <laughs> so during the Great Depression, demand for Hennequin dropped significantly, and before World War II, there was a worse development, which was synthetic fibers, oh, yeah. right? So um, now you didn't need Hennequin to make rope, you needed plastic, right? Uh, so a lot of these haciendas started to fail, um, and the tramways failed with them, right? You know, there's no one, there was no one there. There's no reason for them anymore, but they were not ripped up. They were abandoned in place. And since most of them used public rights away, they sort of became informally in public ownership, right? Yeah. yeah. If you've already established, it's easy to like build, uh, like a little tram car, then, you know, someone's going to do that. Yeah. So this became the world's largest anarchist railroad. Yeah. <laughs> you, you take a picnic table and you put some wheels on it and you put a little motor on it and you haul it around with a donkey and you, you, you can go anywhere. Oh, uh, that rules. Yeah. Rules. So some people ran these as like fixed route trams that charged fares. Other people used them as private vehicles. You know, if your house was next to the tramway, you just lifted it off the tracks and parked it in front of your house. If you met someone going the other way on a one-track railroad, you just pulled the cart off the tracks and let them pass, right? And of course, you know, this is a, it's a tramway. You have the miracle of steel wheels on steel rails, so very large weights could be carried with very little power, right? You know, or strain on the donkey or whatever, right? You're telling me they uh, didn't invent the Mayan Hyperloop? <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's like uh, a was, shitload of donkeys. There yes. was a guy on Jeopardy the other day who worked for Hyperloop, and I, ugh. Mm. He did not Gross. win. <laughs> Good. Yeah. So, there was, there's also still a niche market for Hennequin out there. And yeah, some artisanal tramway, rope. Yeah, artisanal rope, or bad to kill ya. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and like so, bags and stuff like that. If you wanna, if you wanna, like, really, really do cultural appropriation right, and by yeah. right I mean really wrong, is uh, just steal the the original design and then steal the original material oh there you go that's thinking that's thinking smarter not harder or working harder not smarter god damn it working so, fast not so to, to, I'm tired. To, 
Um, yeah. Our three adults attempt to remember the friends. <laughs> work smarter, not harder. There so, we go. Yeah. Since there's still a niche market from the sources I had, some of these tramways remained in use at least as late as 2002. Um, huh. Dope as fuck. Until they yeah. were closed in the aftermath of 9-11. Uh, well, Her <laughs> Never forget Hurricane Alice. Isidore actually wrecked up a whole bunch of the area. Mm -hmm. um, there may oh, be some of still hurricanes. around, but I'm not sure. Um, they also had narrow gauge steam railways, right? Because you can't ship stuff over tramway by long distances. Um, there are about a half a dozen companies that built half a dozen lines in the late uh, 19th century. Um, Why narrow gauge? Just because it's cheaper? It was during the narrow gauge fad of the late 19th century where people were like, well, if you make the rails slightly closer together, we can still go about the same speed, but have tighter corners, so it's cheaper, right? Ah, okay. Um, I mean, I have nothing yeah. that's... This is, this is, like, the, the idea that you can build a railroad on a fad yeah. is very funny. Yes, it was... Uh, narrow gauge was very much a late 19th century fad. You would think it would be earlier, but no, it was later. But um, <laughs> Fucking railroad hipsters. I'm yeah. honestly surprised that Dan Maya is not a monorail. <laughs> he could have easily been. They, they like, just... Absolute oil salesman around here. <laughs> Take oil salesman. Sorry. One of the weird things about it is that it was mostly financed by local Yucatan businessmen as opposed to being financed by like American uh, capitalists or European ones. Cause yeah, I'm surprised there isn't like a white guy in a waistcoat who's got like Henneken Monopoly, you know? Yeah, it's. Um, it, it, uh, it's the narrow way thing? Yeah, the narrow gauge yeah. uh, railways are mostly locally financed as opposed to the, the normal way you finance a railroad is your brother's yeah, cousin's America, uncle's yes. roommate is going on a trip to Europe and you hang up, hand him a briefcase full of bonds and you say, hey, yeah, while you're over there, can you try and sell these? Um, <laughs> yeah, because like for Americans at the time, Yucatan looked like underdeveloped mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they didn't want to invest there. And we didn't, we didn't have like a giant Chinese uh, com uh, investing all over the place doing kind of these kinds of things, yet. Yeah, I yet. guess so. Yeah. Mm. So you had, you had this sort of whole three-foot narrow-gauge uh, railroad system. On this map, those are the ones in light uh, gray. Um, so <laughs> As opposed to the ones in uh, medium gray, and, dark oh, gray. No, no, yeah, the dark, the dark lines are the tramways. Um, so it was mostly a three-foot narrow-gauge system, except a tramway from Merida to Progreso up here, which was the port. Right. Hi, this is Justin in post-production. Uh, I meant to say standard gauge railroad here, not a tramway. Uh, it was a standard gauge railroad from Merida to Progresso. Okay, back to the show. Um, really a solid name. Hmm. Yeah, and these, these lines were all combined in 1902 into the Unidos de Yucatan, you know, the United Yucatan Railways. You know, and there was this cohesive railway system in the Yucatan, finally. Uh, you can see down here, this is a picture from 1962, transloading uh, goods from the tramway onto the narrow gauge train, which still has a steam locomotive. Hey, uh, if it works, why change it, you know? This is true. Um, uh, by 1950, the Nacionales de Mexico had completed a line to Campeche, and the system was slowly converted to standard gauge, but also they just pruned a lot of lines, right? They're just like, ah, yeah. it's just too expensive to convert does, yeah. these. Fuck them, right? <clears throat> um, and you start getting modern, improved roads in the area in the 1960s, you know, they just start to get the bulldozers, start running through the jungle, you know, uh, run over some pumas, right? Um, oh, and no. then <laughs> in the 90s, they put in the really modern, like, um, you know, two lane, four lane highways, right? Yeah, that was like uh, a big inf national infrastructure project, wasn't it? It's like national route. I don't even remember what route it was. 180, I want to say. Mm. Um, like the one that goes end to end. Um, you know, once the modern highways come in, of course, passenger trains are discontinued. Fuck you, buy a car. Buy a car. Um, <laughs> And the Yucatan Railroad Laws never... has unironically said that to the Amish. I do want to point that out. <laughs> I see blaring Abba leaning out a window. Yeah, he was. He was leaning I out actually, a window. Actually, was blaring was... Abba. <laughs> That's just true. The real thing um... that happened to me. 
the Yucatan Railroad was uh, never taken over by the nationalized railroad, but it was in privatization. It was sold off to the Orange Menace, Genesee and Wyoming. Oh, God. Um, Hurricane Ida wrecked a whole bunch of track, and they filed to abandon the line in 2008. Another company uh, came and bought it and rescued it, which currently operates it. Um, another fun fact is that the original uh, Yucatan Railways, uh, five of their steam locomotives, after they were retired in the 60s, uh, Walt Disney World was looking for steam locomotives no to way. Play the Magic out. Railway. Ah. Or they met the, the Magic Kingdom Railway. And so all five of those are from uh, Unidos de Yucatan. Holy uh, shit, uh, I did not yes. know that. And uh, they are, they're also all Baldwin products made right here in Philadelphia. Um, <laughs> Justin, once again, proving your, your value is the only one of us who does research. Yes. Sometimes I do. Every, every like fourth bonus episode I'm supposed to write. <laughs> so that's sort of, so the state of the railway today is, um, oof. No, not good. Is that what it says in the shareholders pamphlet? Just, uh. <laughs> I mean, look at the pictures. It's pretty yeah. oof. So the line from Merida to Campeche and then further south, it goes to, I forget what the port is there. Um, Progresso? Or was no, uh, no, no, it's different further, port? Okay. It's like down in like the, the very bottom of like sort of the bowl, you know, I, 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 hold mm. on. There's, um, uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da, Google Maps. <laughs> uh, ba -da -ba -da. <laughs> Right. We could honestly just upload like an hour and a half of Roz trying to find stuff noises. We, we, we can play Geo, uh, Geo uh, Guesser uh, and uh, Co uh, Coatso uh, Coalcus. Oh, I always, I always <laughs> love Coatso Coatus, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Uh, uh, What's right that? Like, yeah, right next yes. to the Cotawingo Dam. <laughs> <laughs> Where yeah. There's uh, there's uh, rail f there, there's uh, connections to the rest of the Mexican railway network and a rail ferry that goes to Mobile, Alabama. Um, <laughs> a nice little bar, but they only have much light. Yes. So this is sort of the, the, the state of the railroad at the moment, right? Which is uh, bad. bad. Yeah, me great. basically yeah. Mexican railroad uh, in the like collective consciousness of the country is for one thing and one thing only, and it's uh, to transport immigrants to the United States. Like in, <laughs> if, if you ever see someone mention trains, it's because of that. Uh, the the most famous the, the there's a famous train called La Bestia that just has like an unimaginable death count just horror. Mm. Uh, oh, yeah. So that sticks yeah. in the mind. And uh, until uh, this past couple of decades, yeah. And 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 so you're you're looking at a, a railroad that maintains some of its narrow gauge characteristics. Like here, this is in Campeche. You can see it runs through people's front yards. Right. Um, and then this is in Hessel Chakan over here. Uh, you can see. Like, there's your a formal of... apology to the. the yeah. people oh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that one. Yeah. Like, I, um, like I said, Mexicans <laughs> will lie to you. <laughs> here, here you can see a unique method of weed control, which is to just run the train through the brush. There you go. <laughs> uh, this it looks abandoned, but you can see the railhead is shiny, which means they have run a train here uh, several times recently. Um, Just uh, put a, put a mower blade on the front like a cowcatcher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, then there's this is uh, in Uman, which I think is just south of Merida. I forget exactly. Uh, you can see this is sort of uh, you know there's grass everywhere. Um, and then in Merida proper, again, this is the main line, and you can sort of see this is, it's all overgrown. This is not well-maintained track. The weird thing, these, these photos are mostly taken in 2020, 2021, based mm -hmm. on Google Street View. Um, and all this track was renewed in 2015, or 2014, and oh. they just did not do oh. any maintenance on it in that interim time. <laughs> Yeah, because the, the original idea for the train was not uh, from this government. It came from the past, more conservative uh, government. Hmm. Yeah, like in, in 2008, uh, train speeds on this line, this several hundred kilometer line, 
we're down to 500, uh, five kilometers an hour. On down to average. a mere 500 kilometers an hour. Down. Um, all right. So you have, you, you, you have this very ill-maintained rail system, mm, right? You can't use it for shit because it's so yeah, it, slow. It's mostly, you can only like really ship bulk non-perishable commodities. Like I think in Merida, the biggest customer, there's a cement plant. There's a power plant somewhere near, the, I forget the name of the town. Um, yeah, and the, they, they, they don't lead to places that white people care about. Like, it's yeah. all ex haciendas, uh, all indigenous towns, and, like, there's no... They sometimes lead uh, to, to places that, you know, have pyramids and shit, but most of them are not even excavated, like... Yeah, uh, yeah. You can, you can go to a ones. city. You can go to a city, but it's the coal plant area of it. You know, yeah. Exactly. Like if if it's not like a, the name of a city that would show up in Civilization Six, it's not gonna have. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the people are not gonna care. Yeah, and I, of course, there's no passenger trains, right? You know, and this no. is it, you're not even using this for like uh, uh, any kind of perishable freight. You can't ship um, anything that is timely at all. You can't ship. You know, they they just let this thing really go to shit. Um, and of course, you know, that's bad because you got more trucks on highways. It's more expensive to have various consumer goods if you don't have a railroad. But luckily, hi, it's Justin. Uh, so this is a commercial for the podcast that you're already listening to. Uh, people are annoyed by these. So let me get to the point. We have this thing called Patreon, right? The deal is you give us two bucks a month and we give you an extra episode once a month. Uh, sometimes it's a little inconsistent, but you know, it's two bucks. You get what you pay for. Um, it also gets you our full back catalog of bonus episodes so you can learn about exciting topics like guns, pickup trucks, or pickup trucks with guns on them. The money we raise through Patreon goes to making sure that the only ad you hear on this podcast is this one. Anyway, that's something to consider if you have two bucks to spare each month. Uh, join at patreon.com forward slash WTYP pod. Do it if you want. Or don't. It's your decision and we respect that. Back to the show. Uh... A man came to the rescue. We an hour in, and we begin the subject yeah. of this episode. <laughs> yes, the uh, Titanic episode. Our lovely content. I don't have to leave the middle of this one. Yeah. Um, this is Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, president of Mexico, and decided, you know what, we're going to modernize this railroad. Yeah, and we can, we can just call him Amlo for short. I think. We're yeah, gonna, everyone does gonna, that. Yeah. Well, actually, gonna... conservatives like to call him Lopez because that sounds more uh, lower class. Barack uh, Hussein Obama. Oh yeah, they do that. They, <laughs> they we got it's really funny because it's not even his first last name, but like, I mean, it, it is his first name. They don't use Obrador because that sounds cool. They use Lopez because that sounds. <laughs> I mean, I, I gotta say, it sounds more Mexican, and mm -hmm. so that's how the the far right in Mexico is just. Very <laughs> and, and and AMLO is like on the left, but in Ish. a way that is like now perhaps fatally compromised. He's it's... always been all over the place, but he's definitely gotten worse lately. Like he if 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 2012 AMLO had won the elections, I, I it would have been way harder to complain about this kind of things. But by the time he got there, uh he, by the time he got there, he inherited a lot of the stuff that, like, neoliberalism, neoliberalism had become inevitable. And uh, I think he bought in. Like, mm, he, he, he stopped fighting against it, kind of. The other thing is that, like, Mexican presidents lately really like to have a big sort of ribbon cutting thing. They love to have oh, a big yeah. project. Oh, yeah. And Amlo loves that. Like, when he was, uh, when he governed Mexico City, he made, like, a whole. Uh, second, uh, like uh, second hi highway over. Mm. Ah, the, the, the one of the loops thingies, you know, for traffic stuff. Don't worry. You, you don't, but I think, yeah, 
I, I, I actually don't know how to say it in English, huh? Well, well yeah, he, he inaugurated that, and that was his big project, and uh, he was kind of, it was kind of popular, kind of not, but, but yeah. Mm, He's and always like, liked infrastructure projects that he can cover yeah. on. And crucially, his predecessor as as president and also sometime wife murderer Enrique Peña Nieto, his his deal <laughs> was that he his big project was that he wanted to open a new airport for Mexico City, right? Oh yeah. And, and uh, so hmm, instead of doing that, you can like you can you can you know put two fingers up at him by doing this different thing instead. Yes. Oh, of course he he that was one of the only campaign promises. Uh, Regarding projects that he kept, because he actually promised not to do the Tren Maya, he uh, for a while. <laughs> I think he changed mid campaign, uh, and then there's a lot of other projects that he outright promised not to do that he's actually doing. Uh, but the the airport was the big one, and the one that uh, if he hadn't done, there definitely would have been like huge fucking protests. And uh, but he he kept his promise and then moved the airport like five towns over. Great, oh my fantastic. God. To the other side of the lake. <laughs> <laughs> so, rather than do a simple rehabilitation of the existing line, El Train Maya was uh, going to be this long-distance electric rail <laughs> run that would go all the way around the peninsula and hit everywhere that was important. Which meant tourist um, stuff mostly, um, mm. but and also uh, one big thing was it was going to connect to the one uh, the train line that's also being built and it's also really controversial that connects uh, the both sides of the oceans, like uh, one between huh. Veracruz and Oaxaca, and the, oh, right, the port yes. of Salinas Cruz. Uh, so it was gonna be like uh, for tourists and like a second Panama Canal and like. All these kind of things. Um, the other thing which is interesting about this is this is the first, um, what do you might call, state-of-the-art, long-distance, mixed-traffic railroad built in the Americas since uh, probably the Milwaukee Road Pacific Extension in 1909. Jesus. Um, <laughs> so you can see why he wanted to, like, yeah. that. if you read that out loud, that sounds cool. Yeah, and it, train good, it, as we know. Yes, tra that train is good, and you'd have high speed electric trains. You'd also have a, you'd have provisions for freight trains, right? Um, and they don't really talk about the freight trains, to to my knowledge. They, oh yeah, that's no, not that's something, <laughs> not something they're interested in. Despite the fact the freight trains are already there, you know. <laughs> yeah, like because they're already there to also be in the Oaxaca, the trans ismic uh, train that's going to yeah. be like just. In the to the to the far side of the screenshot there. All right. Yeah. There's that. Well. There's already. Yeah. There's the railroad down here, which was very successful before the Panama Canal was built. I don't know if they could revive that. Uh, Not it's, with it's the simple. cartels around. Yeah. Uh, Amlo Amlo goes out on the balcony. He says, "Listen, it's simple. We ask. We order the Mexican Navy to blow up the Panama Canal. Good idea." Yeah, fine. <laughs> oh, but then, wait, actually, we managed to level the whole thing. Now there's no locks. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I think he would more likely just settle the Panama Canal with Mexican soldiers. Like, he... <laughs> <laughs> just, like, a general point to get the Panama Canal, or I get in. Yeah, because he's, he's already doing, like, some... Uh, the roof of the Panama Canal. He's already doing some <laughs> projects with uh, other countries in, the, in Central America. And that have deep ties with the Tren Maya, because like another selling point that some is sometimes said out loud, depending on the audience, is immigration control. Really? Yeah, because this this covers yeah. all of Mexico's southern border, more or less. Right. This is true, yeah. And if you, like, if you the, just put a big fucking train across it, that makes it a lot harder to you know cross the border. And also, <laughs> as we'll get you into, he's just, he, he, yeah, he's just given it all to the army. And oh like, listen, God, yeah. Amlo is like, I, I bet in his mind he's way more leftist than he is, and uh, oh, aren't we all? but yeah. he has <laughs> always been, he was great friends with Trump. They really <laughs> got along together. And he's not friends with Biden. He doesn't like Biden at all. Well, again. <laughs> he, I, I genuinely us. think it's because he thought Trump was funnier. <laughs> Which is 
True. Sometimes he's right. Like, <laughs> and but they did negotiate a lot of stuff uh, with regards to like migra- immigration, and Trent Maya was a big part of that. So uh, uh, one of the, one of the issues with this project, so this project, um, uh, you know, it's it's a big project. It requires it's, it's one of the biggest construction projects probably in the Western Hemisphere right now. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, of course, democratically decided upon because it was well, announced it was, with it much was, fanfare. It was undemocratically and, decided, mm-hmm. and then the UN made them go, "No, you have to, you have to fucking let people vote yeah. on this shit." <laughs> and they, they didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's genius. Announced to much fanfare in September 2018 and put up to a referendum on December 15th, 2019. And Before course, we had specs. Mm-hmm. 92% of voters in Chiapas, Tabasco, Yucatan, Campeche, and Quintana Roo all approved, and nothing was bad, and there was nothing bad about that election, and, and, and it was completely <laughs> legitimate, right? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, especially if you look at the the, the voting uh, uh, cards, yeah, they yeah. look at the back of a serial oh, card. We'll books. see them. We'll see oh, them. Yeah. We got to put, yes. put a picture of it later. Um, now, one of the issues, of course, is that only two percent of eligible voters voted. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah, and like of those two percent, they were all sort of Amlo's various party cronies. Mm-hmm. Oh no! <laughs> I wish. The thing about Amlo is he's not even that good at what he thinks he's doing uh, with regards to like controlling the whole country. Like he, his dream is that Morena controls like uh, everything in Mexico, no? right? But his biggest project is run almost entirely by conservative fail sons. <laughs> like if you like a local leader or like a governor from one of the conservative parties. And you have a son that, like, you had enough money because you, like, did a lot of corruption. So you have enough money to send your, your, your kid to, like, I don't know, an economic school in Chicago. And, yeah, he uh, starts calling himself, like, Hank or something. Oh, no, yeah, they, they love to, they fucking love that. There's a shitload okay. of Hanks. And uh, so you send them over, you come back, and that's how you, trans- you transform from the nationalistic corruption to neoliberal that... Uh, you know, you, 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 you do the, you do the Pinochet, you get the Chicago boys and, uh, hmm. but Chicago boys, like they went to cool schools and they were like smart at economics and whatever, like they, they, they yeah. knew how to kill people to get money. So these are the fail sons. <laughs> and that's why they're in charge of like shitty little parts of the project. And they are all conservatives, like trying to pretend they're not, uh, they're cause like Morena is basically filled to the rim of, with people from other parties. Uh, that hmm. was his strategy to control the whole of Mexico to just like just paint paint them uh, paint them uh, pur- purple. Yeah, do like a PRI too, and yeah. except PRI too, except this time I'm the institution. <laughs> oh yeah, no, and like it's really funny because he he uses the term the cuarta transformación, the fourth transformation, and he's referring to the the. You know, first the independence, then the revolution, then the national nationalization, and then uh, we are the new, the fourth uh, version of this. But it tracks more with the four times uh, PRI has rebranded. <laughs> so it's it, 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 that's one of the ma- most the hugest cell phones in history, or maybe just an admission. Maybe he just didn't give a shit. Mm, Mr. It, Police, I gave you all the clues. Yeah, because Apple <laughs> was from pre. Like he he was in the PRI. He he then founded uh, PRD. Then he became uh, the founder of Morena because he didn't get the nomination from PRD. God. Well, we also have a we have a photo. If yeah. we go to the the next oh. slide here, of um, your boy Amlo asking <laughs> for asking for the Mayan pantheon's permission to build the railway. And, Not uh, waiting for an answer. No. Right. If I were in the Mayan pantheon, I would ask for some significant revisions to this project. Yeah, I would ask for specs at the very least. Yeah, I would, I would, give, me, give me the specs. <laughs> yeah, like, seeing a sh- like a chuck mall in like a high vis uh, with a clipboard, like yeah, no, you can't fucking read it through here, dude. It is, it is very difficult to find specs on this project. I, yeah, I it was hard. That. Even it's like uh, strangely secretive. Yeah, because mm-hmm. like most of the specs we found were specs from the private companies uh, that handle yeah. like sixty percent of the train. The other forty percent is owned by the army, and they're not 
<laughs> they're not g- g- letting the specs out. Oh, no. Yeah, and if you're, like, looking for, like, where are the tracks actually going to go, that's under lock and key. That's no one, classified. No it's a mix on the substrosters. <laughs> You're not going to know even, until the bulldozers are knocking your house down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> well, they, they just released uh, uh, saying they they nationalized a huge swath of land. They did not say which which parts of it. Of course. Because <laughs> that's, that's national security. Great. So, so for your informed voters, they did give a nice pamphlet with their, while, while you were voting. Um, which had this delightful map. It's so it's so charming. Yes. The the the, the train is gonna bring you every service that you need, uh, like and AMD used to do back in the day. Uh, all of your problems will be solved. Uh, also, um, it, you have to like remember that this is uh, sort of a a vote that's being imposed upon people who may not always have good Spanish, and it's only in Spanish. Of course. And the, it was like uh, mostly voted by people who owned big parts of the land. Mm. Like, uh, right, even, yeah. even the, the, the collective part of it, like, uh, you know, there's, there's ups and downs in the, in the Hedo system. And uh, so, so if, even in the most idealized, let's say there's one town out of the hundred towns that was had relatively good attendance and voting uh, record. Even there, the only people who were actually explaining what the fuck was going to happen were the people who controlled land, not the villagers, not the townspeople. So the, the even even the most uh, some some of the, some of the people were told this was just an informative visit. Like they were just gonna tell you how cool the train was gonna be. The even though they had jackal information. Well, I love I love that if you look on the top of the polling paper, it says participative exercise, which to me makes it sound oh, like it like, sound like a election. It's a school point. project. Yeah, yeah. That's what I had to say I, I would look at this and say, yeah, I support this in principle, but you know, I want some specifics. It looks like when <laughs> you want the schools vote for for presidents and just mm-hmm. to like yeah, make yeah, an yeah. exercise and see if if our school likes more uh, playing them more than Trump. <laughs> So, Talk about the marketing. Who is this train it, for? Uh, it turns out this is the first train developed exclusively for Instagram thoughts. Oh, <laughs> <you. In> Instagram <laughs> thoughts need trains too. I, I, you know, I, I agree with that, obviously. But like the marketing is kind of, you know, especially the English language marketing. You know, oh yeah, it's kind of I would like, say it's for TikTokers I, who move to Mexico. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's like, well, you go to Cancun, now you can take this train and you can go take a picture of yourself on top of the pyramid. You know, yeah, you, like you trying to-, to like find a way to to sell uh, you know, archaeological sites to people who would otherwise have no interest because you need their money. Yeah, well, yeah people it- who would usually just stay in Cancun and get drunk. Mm. Mm-hmm. And uh no, like get I- drunk on a pyramid. The, the uh, people in charge of this marketing campaign, it's been like a succession of transphobic gay white dudes. Like, I think they're, they're in like their third or fourth right now. They, I don't know why they, they exclusively hire gay turfs. And, uh, <laughs> Job qualifications uh, must, must be transphobic. Not sure why this is in here, but we're not removing it. Maybe they think it's going to address... Attract British tourists? I... <laughs> yeah, the turf Maya. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> Fuck, I'm still in for my podcast. <laughs> it's weird that, you know, you you because there's there's definitely benefits to this project, you know, you you'd be able to bring in, you know, a, a whole bunch of goods very cheaply. Sure. And like you know, even have, even uh, tourism, you, you, like yeah. th- there's 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 a place for like ethical tourism, probably. But of course. this and, isn't yeah, it. it. It's definitely it, not it. it. It's definitely yeah, not it. it. it yeah. This is not it. You know, it's just like uh, yeah, we're 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 gonna we're gonna allow you to take better selfies through our twelve hundred kilometer railroad. And like um, <laughs> they, there's already problems with tourism right now. Before this shit's going on, like the the amount of, of ecological devastation that it has brought, like uh, yeah. some of the worst tourism, like there's there's uh, islands that used to be pristine that now 
glow in the dark because of the fucking uh, oil lo- and low and lotions that uh, tourists put on themselves. And uh, yeah, I, I knew I knew I shouldn't have fucking emptied out a bunch of these glow sticks all over the beach. <laughs> but what are you gonna do? <laughs> eat them. I gotta eat them. And like so the of my power, Alice. It's uh, that and global warming are absolutely destroying the coral reef, and that's that doesn't help with those hurricanes. And you got like a lot of this, which is very explicitly oriented towards tourism, like the locations of some of the stations. Oh yeah, right. So this is uh, the Chichen Itza station, right, which is a uh, ancient Looks Mayan good. city. I yeah. can't figure out where the trains are. Ah, um, go right through the the uh, the city. Uh, dude. Well, yeah, There's, I guess you know, if, if it went like, right yeah. through through the town, I I don't understand. I don't like it when I see a render of the train station. I don't know where the trains are. You know, I, this this kind of indicates to me that the trains are not the focus here. You actually, this is what a they gigantic... do is, it's it's like a roller coaster. They use Chichen Itza and the temple. They use it as a lift hill, actually. Yeah. The, uh, the only cool parts sweet, of the train. Sweet air. The only cool parts of the train are the designs by architects, and they clearly don't give you a single shit about trains. This or, is true. Uh, yes. Or Mayans, like <laughs> lol. Well, I think if you're if you're trying to like provide access to an archaeological site, you might want the uh, the modern infrastructure to be subtle. You know, I <laughs> I kind of, I kind of like the big serpent like um uh, like overhang. I kind of like this. I think this is good. I th- yeah, I mean, it fits the theme. The, the the Chichen Itza. That's where the Mayans imported Quetzalcoatl and transformed them into Kukulkan. Like, hey, but the thing I'm getting here is that you get these renders and you can't figure out where the station actually is or how it's oriented. That's true. What are, what are the, uh, where are the tracks going to go? How is this going to impact the archaeological site? You know, and it's certainly using a hell of a lot of land for, oh, yeah. you know, a train station, which because, should be fairly simple. Because that's the point of the project to a certain part. Uh, the, the real marketing uh, beyond the, you know, immigration thing and the, the freight train thing that they don't really talk about. The yeah. other part that they always do mention, and that's the one part that there's uh, the UN absolutely fucking loves, is the development part. The the hmm. making every single station a town. Uh, right. Just they really fucking hate the jungle. Uh, they they absolutely do. And the 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 Amlo's right hand man who he faded a little bit from the political scene recently, but. He was the big pusher for this. Uh, was Alfonso Romo, who's uh, he's he's connected to Monsanto, by the way. Uh, huh. And uh, oh, he, the, the, the good f- folks over at Monsanto, yes, yeah, the, yes. The, the, <laughs> the 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 proper left. And uh, <laughs> he, re- a- a- one actual quote of his was, "We're gonna make this project to take the 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 Indians out of their teepees." Jesus. Oh, oh on, right. Man. Yeah, you said that earlier. Yeah, yeah Alfonso <laughs> Romo was is straight up like Porfirio, uh, Porfirio fan. Like, but from the left, it's absolutely fucking nuts. He's super fucking racist, super fucking homophobic. And he <laughs> was a big bankroller of AMLO's very, uh, uh, of, of AMLO for a long while. And, uh, He's again. He kind of retired from the project, and instead they got like uh, an army of white twins to run the pro- uh, the marketing. <laughs> and uh, so, so yeah, he he got in. Also, would just give rich guys power. That's fucking sick. Yeah. Just let them do whatever they fucking want. Because like one of Amlo's big things was uh, he was he the the Morena is always scared of coups for some reason. Like they they. Uh, Listen, I get it. We we saw what happened to Evo, like, but Amlo's not even close to that. So he was really war. Uh, that's probably was the the first two years of his uh, of his presidency was just obsessing over that kind of stuff and just uh, assuring the United States that he was definitely not going to do too many leftist things, hmm. if any, and that he was definitely going to do the Tren Maya. So. Yeah, a big part of this is uh, some like rearranging, rearranging how the, the 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 territory works, getting rid of a lot of vehicles, getting rid of privatizing a lot of shit, and the parts that are not privatized are gonna go straight to the army because that's one of the creepiest parts of of Amlo and, and one of the most contradictory. Because if he's so fucking paranoid about who's, 
God damn it. Why, why would you give gonna everything be the first, to the army? Because he's he's going to be the first leftist time. in history to stop uh, being cooed by being nice to the army. And then when the CIA <laughs> tells them what to do, this general or whatever will be like, actually, he's my best friend, and like I really like him. Yeah, and of course, he's the army... He's getting shot in the back by some CIA I'm screaming, I'm not going to be Praetorian guarded. I'm not going to be Praetorian guarded. <laughs> and every single ex-president is constantly on Twitter trying to Juan Guaido this shit. Like, he, he, and he really makes it easy. He constantly gives power to, to the military. The, the, uh, the airport that was cancelled was going to be private, but now it's run by the army the, in huh. Santa Lucia. What? Yeah. It's, an, it's a, a, a military airbase that's going to be expanded for some commercial flights. That's, that was his response. And, yeah. uh, like, the, the Mexican army is massively corrupt and massively infiltrated by the cartels. And uh, so <laughs> it's, it's really worrying uh, to see them get, like, they're going to get the revenue from a lot of these stations. Straight this up. True, yeah. It's going to go straight to the army. And, uh, it's 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 kind of the biggest betrayal of his campaign because he wa- he ran on getting the military out of the streets because that's one of the the the, the 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 past president started the war on drugs in Mexico and b- b- brought us like oh yeah Afga- that was just thing war the levels of not balazos, right yeah like hugs not bullets yeah hugs not bullets that yeah. was his catchphrase <laughs> and oh. then he militarized the police. He created the Guardia Nacional. Come on, listen, man. listen. I need, I need these level four plates so that I can hug you more effectively. <laughs> so yeah, he he uh, he uh, militarized the police, created the Guardia Nacional, which basically was made from elements from the police, from the army, the navy, la 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 la, and uh, that that is basically the the only thing that's gonna. Oh, because he's also like. For someone who hates neoliberalism, he fucking loves austerity. Mm. Mm. And the only part that did not get austerity was the army. But you can't, you can't, you can't cut the budget of, of his special boys. Yeah. Maybe he just like, maybe he's like me. Maybe he like really wanted to be a soldier when he was a kid and he never quite got over it. Oh, and his thing was the, no, his one was, but he, he was the only politician that is not corrupt in his mind. And uh, I, I actually buy that. I don't think he personally is corrupt. Maybe his sons are. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, uh, but the, and definitely Alfonso Ramo. Uh, but the, he, he's obsessed with corruption, which has always worked for the left. Just as Lula. Like, fighting corruption <laughs> is <laughs> a sure way to not get anyone angry at you, and definitely always works. I Especially if you include the army. Corruption is always such an abstract term. It seems like it can mean anything you want it to mean. That's oh, the tr- yeah, yeah, it's a way to, to to water down all your politi- leftist political beliefs and just blame yeah. corruption and say corruption instead of capitalism. If you're feeling spicy, you can say neoliberalism. Hmm. Yes, and like yeah, making the army own the entire fucking country is not very neoliberal. <laughs> it's also is- <laughs> like yeah. really bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's the sort of like metal tortilla that someone has dropped on the ground here? <laughs> this is this is uh, the station at Tulum, um, huh. and this is uh, another one of these very fancy renders they produce with the project, um, which is getting some international attention. Once again, I mean, one of the things that's frustrating about a lot of the renderings here is that they are the only information about the design we have available. You have no information about where is the station, how does it interact with its surroundings. Where There's more trustworthy the NFT ends. projects. Yes, <laughs> you know you don't know you, you you know all this stuff is obfuscated, right? Um, and of course we have. Um, I'm I'm deeply curious about this slide because the notes yeah. for this one just say something something bat volcano. Oh, oh okay. Was, okay. So like, here's the thing with the bat <laughs> volcano. I'm gonna say the how you can you just, how can you has, go, Here's the thing with the bat volcano. Like that's a normal <laughs> thing. I'm sorry. The Yucatan Peninsula has the best names. Like one of the stations is gonna go over a place called the Temple of Doom. <laughs> oh, you guys can fucking name them. Like, Jesus yeah, Christ. Just <laughs> fucking asking for it at this point. And this one's. Uh, it, well, you can see in this screenshot, uh, in this uh, uh, slide, is that the train, right now, the, the highway produces enough like noise that the bats in the volcano are not exactly happy. And uh, yeah, 
So because when they build these highways uh, with basically like uh, really underpaid people and uh, oh, before so they could stop using the 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 tram tracks built with basically slave labor, and uh, they didn't give a single shit about the environment, obviously. But this one's supposed to, because they were announcing it was going to be so fucking green and shit. And, uh, but the train track is going to cause so much fucking noise that it's going to basically make this volcano filled with bats inhabitable. So it's just going to bring... That's going to repeat itself over and over through the whole track system, because it's... It's so fucking gross. One of the, 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 the guy that was in charge of the whole project before uh, this year... Uh, Rogelio Pons had a quote that said, uh, "We have too many fat jaguars. We need uh, <laughs> we have uh, we have uh, poor people and fat jaguars, and we need to reverse it." Oh, I I, I fucking uh, yeah! I I put a thing about the fat, fat jaguars. Or jaguars. That's right. Yeah, please don't come out. Listen, I know I'm a fat guy, but like. <laughs> it, it, it was really funny because like one of the one of the promotional things that Amlo put into Twitter was. Uh, they saw a jaguar swimming away from them uh, in one of the uh, visits, and and it was like, oh, look at the majesty of of our territory. But I was just imagining Alfonso Romo shooting the floor and going like, dance, dance, psh, psh, psh. like <laughs> <laughs> it's really fucking gonna devastate a lot of places with cool as names like the Bad Volcano. Yeah, I, I, I mean, anytime you try and find like specifics about where the tracks are going, it's like. Holy shit, you put it there? <laughs> yeah. And like all the things we we started talking about how the, the floor was karstic and like there's a shitload of connected mm. interconnected uh uh underground uh lakes and shit, and most of them are tourist destinations. Because let me tell you, Sonoras are cool as hell. They are super cool to just go underground into a giant pool that has like carvings and uh and and like there's some of them that have like buried treasure and shit. Like it's and so, some of them you can swim in apparently. Yeah, you can go <laughs> with uh with fucking scuba diving and see like old ceramics and coins and shit. Like it's and skulls. <laughs> like it's it is the, the 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 most stereotypical uh tourist destination ever. And but also, it's giant underground caves that you're gonna put a train <laughs> on top of and create giant vibrations on one of the fucking thinnest and, and like not specifically hard grounds. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. That already highways are get completely fucked by this <laughs> by this rain. And do you want to build a train that? Well, I mean, we don't even have yeah. fucking specs for. Well, we have what well, we do we have. have for it is like oh, yeah. three pictures. <laughs> yeah, we have we have some uh, we do have some specs on the trains, which I thought were generally uh, a very odd choice uh, for the folks who went out. That was Alstom, the uh, French company. They beat CIF, which is the Spanish company. Alstom. Um, <laughs> really yes. funny. I-, I wonder how that happened. By the way, did you know that Alstom was accused of corruption in Lithuania in 2018? That they bribed a lot of officials. That sounds about right. Yeah, that yeah. sounds like awesome. <laughs> I bet that just happened in Lithuania. They fucked oh, yeah. up the Acela Expresses. Yes, they um, did. <laughs> they huh. made them four inches too wide. Um, and, and as a result, they couldn't use their tilting capability in the only area where that was needed. <laughs> they also do a bunch of stuff at the Golan Heights they probably shouldn't be doing. Oh! <laughs> but, the, the, but, but, but the train has a first sonar. It does. There is. God damn it! You can see. You can see. It, here, uh, that's what it's it targeting is. the world's nineties worst. kids that watched Beast Wars. <laughs> that's right. That's right. World's worst anamorphs here. <laughs> Morphs from a puma to an Alstom extrapolis, um, and the extrapolis I thought was a very strange choice for this train because it's, it's a very strange a, name for that train. It's a commuter train. Right. No, nobody's it's, fucking commuting on this thing. It's a tourist yeah, highway. It's, it's yeah, fucking I, wild. If they were using this kind of train for like actual development run and consented by the people there, it would make more sense. But I think think like there are five fucking memos that no one saw. Like, yeah, it's, hey, it's we're like, doing that colonialism here. Yeah, because it's uh, you know, your commuter train. It's designed for stop 
accelerate to 100 miles an hour, cruise for two minutes, stop, start again. It's incredibly overpowered for sort of long distance cruising. I don't know what the intention is here, if they're going to build, you know, because if they were stopping at every little town, sure, hmm. buy this train, but, but as, they're not. They're not. They're mm-hmm. just, you know, sort of cruising, right? And we definitely um, don't have specs on the freight trains. And we, yeah, I, I suspect they're just going to use, well, that's the other interesting thing is you have, um, they're using the European train control system as the signaling system here, which no North American freight locomotives are compatible with as of yet. Oh my so God. I don't know if they're just going to fit extra boxes into were, them. Were or they what? compatible with Chinese ones? Because I, I thought, I saw that, yeah. uh, uh, Comrade Blackrock was very interested in investing in uh, the Trend Maya for a while. Well, I, I mean, the issue is for, for any freight service to be like viable on this line, you would need something that's compatible with everything else in North America. Um, right. And, uh, you know, so I, I don't know what they're doing there, if they might just, you know, run them under some kind of special. I, I'm not familiar with railroad operating rules in Mexico. Um, but they may need some kind go, of special asshole. rules. How could for you that, do yeah. that? And also, this doesn't <laughs> look very green. Like, where's the electric part? What the fuck? So they're all. Um, so the long distance train is all diesel, and then the short distance trains are um, dual mode. So they run under electric wires in the electrified portion, but there's also non electrified portions because they cut back the budget. Um, Lame. yeah, exactly. That's such right? a classic British move. Like, we will absolutely do like diesel electric trains because of like electric do, part of a yeah. thing. They're trying to do like Brit- two British things at once. They want to make like the colonialist train and <laughs> colonialist trains. Oh, well, no, there's a lot of transphobia in, in Morena. Let me tell you. And uh, <laughs> oh, uh, with connections to your guys, by the way, Julie Bindel has a bunch of friends in Morena, and uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, the but the the no they they, they want to do the, the the African trains at the same time that they do the the privatizing the train and making austerity they're doing British both in Britain and in a colony at the same time it's <laughs> amazing astounding and uh, what one of the weird things is like I can't there's there's something you do not see in any of the documentation which is what are the services going to be like. Because I could see, like, okay, you have a frequent train that goes from Merida to Cancun. That would make a lot of sense, right? Yeah. Um, but, you know, and it, it came, like, every 30 minutes throughout the day. That Again, this would make a lot of sense. It'd be the best system, rail system in North America, period, right? Uh, but they don't say they're going to do that. They're only buying 17 train sets, which... What? For, yeah, for, and, and, like, I don't know four or five of them for the long distance, eight hour slow tourist cruise train, right? This is not actually uh, uh, something which is going to provide, you know, a great, like actual usable service for the people who live there. It's very, very tourist oriented for the passenger segment. The freight segment, who knows? Um. (laughs) I think the freight center is still going to be like in negotiations with like big, big, big companies. Like maybe they try to get into the Belt and Road shit. Like, yeah. but mm. that's gonna again. Amlo wants to uh, be make the U.S. happy, and maybe that doesn't make them happy. Uh, they're also like, again, it's clear that the trains are not the point of this. Yeah, the point is to get basically some uh, cool architectural shit around tourist places. So, like, said fail sons that probably signed this contract with Alstom uh, can like just get rich of uh, making Airbnbs. And uh, and the the other part is the con- the part controlled by the army. Curiously, is further south. Huh, Curiously, getting closer to places controlled by the Zapatistas. That's gotta be a coincidence, right? That'll do it. I think. Mm-hmm. I think. I just looked this up before we started the uh, the podcast. I think the whole thing will now be controlled by the army. <laughs> um, sure yeah, yeah, but they'll make them be nice in the northern segment. Oh my god. Um, uh, but it's even for tourists, like that's kind of fucking weird. Like I, I don't know how how much like good vibes for the kind of crowd that this there because Dua Lipa made a TikTok there. Uh <laughs> okay, for the kind of like brat uh, frat bro and uh, anti-masker that uh lives in Tulum and and uh 
Cancun. I don't know if they're gonna like super fucking like getting into a train surrounded by fucking guys with machine guns. So it's okay. They're Americans. They inherently trust the army. Yeah. Okay, but these are brown people with machine guns. Oh. Maybe, oh, oh, maybe, oh, maybe, shit. oh shit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe I have sympathy with the wrong people, but I do, I do feel bad for the like nineteen-year-old Mexican private who has to have a bunch of like bros from Cancun cough in his face all day. Oh my god, Jesus! <laughs> well, they're also distributing the vaccines with the army, so they're probably fine. <laughs> Everything is the army around here. Yeah? When, when, when everything you have is the army, everything looks like I don't know, fucking war, I guess. Oh my god, I I have no fucking clue what's gonna happen after I'm I'm the lead's office with that. So this is um this is this is another uh like interesting uh thing. So talking about the right of way, um ah. this is the H- H- Heschel Chacken. Uh, town we talked about earlier where you saw all those weeds. Uh, I mm. took that on uh, the photo before is from Google Street View right about here. And you can see the right of way being driven through up here already. Because this is all already under construction. Um, and the, oh, um, yeah. the rail line they want to build through here goes right down a street. Oh. Right, and they've decided. Well, fuck that, kids. Rather than build a bypass, which would be not difficult, and you know, you might have to take one or two houses. No, we'll just build straight through. We're not even going to build them a train station. Um, see, they're just see, smashing... sees a street with a mural of Che Guevara on it. All right, yeah. trains going through here at 120 miles an hour. Yeah, they're just building straight through all these towns. They're not even trying to like. You know, and they're not putting stations in these towns. They're just going straight fucking through. And they're not even trying to identify, like, maybe we could do a right of way that would have fewer, you know, house takings, so on and so forth. I, this is the, the only places where they are doing that is where they're being forced by lawyers, like by yes. townspeople coming together and getting some environmentalist lawyers to, uh, please save my fucking house. Mm. I'd rather not have my house bulldozed for the train. Yeah, and right? like yeah. this was always going to happen, which is part of why it's so fucking stupid too. Even even if the, these what they were using like the cool trains and everyone the it, train Twitter could just absolutely fucking dig into this and love it. Even then, like how the fuck are you going to use high speed rail when you have to do these kind of turns? Like, because you're bull- bulldozing over. Uh, towns and towns are one thing. The other part is like yeah. all the archaeological sites that haven't been explored. Like, oh yeah, they're tripping over with with uh, well, archaeological. Do you want to know my favorite fact that I discovered from this? Oh, for sure. Is that the uh, the, the the National Archaeological Institute um, it, it, they announced how many uh, artifacts they've discovered so far in the course of building this, but they will not say what they are, where they found them, or what they're worth. Oh which I, I just, I really appreciate that kind of secrecy. Um, one, of my, one of my theories about why they're using these commuter train type trains is that they, they have decided they're just going to use the existing right-of-way, so they're oh, yeah. going to have to slow down and speed up a whole lot. Yeah, that's probably going, what's going to end up happening. It's going to be irritating as shit to drive. Oh my god, yeah. And, and, and if you're on a sleeper train, that's like going... Because one of these is going to be a sleeper train. And if you're like, overnight, it's just like, you go from 99 miles an hour to 10 miles an hour to back up to 99 miles an hour, I'm sure that'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, the only, the only way this could be worse if it was not the flattest place around. Yeah, I. That's the bizarre thing. But is, that, that's the, the thing. Where, when you get farther south, it does get kind of like mountainy. All of these issues where they're doing all this eminent domain straight through towns, they're just taking people's houses. You could build a bypass really easily and not have these issues, and they've simply chosen not yeah, to you, do you that. You simply <laughs> want to have the issues, right? Um, <laughs> Also, if you think if you think back uh, to the, the the opening ceremony where Amlo like asked for asked for the gods' permission to do this thing, at, at, at the speech he gave after that, he said that uh, the the railroad wouldn't uproot a single tree. A single tree, he said that. Oh, Even God. if they only use the right of ways, they would have had to do that because most of them have fucking trees. <laughs> the 
<laughs> if they if they use the existing right if they if they all the idea of, of brought, keeping all the trees but none of the people because because the, thing, the thing about Amlo is that he is no he fat jammers, fat trees. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about the thing about Amlo is that he is a Bosma, a wood elf, and as such, he uh, <laughs> like religiously rejects the prospect of harming a tree. If you just brought the existing railroad up to a state of good repair to just run freight trains on, you would have to tear down. You would have to cut down like tens of thousands of trees just to get a good, you know. 20 feet on each side of the rail uh, center just for basic rail operations and, that and were relatively modern. It's fucking nuts <laughs> that he even started to say that because the entire point of this is to bulldoze the jungle. Like the, right. the making new towns, you can't, they're not gonna build fucking tree houses. <sighs> that Should is we talk grim, about the, the, actual, the actual process of making this railroad? Yes. Oh, yeah. So here we see some of the progress which is already done on this railroad. I, it's remarkable how quickly this went from referendum to right of way acquisition to actually. Oh, it's, it's like a full court press, isn't it? Yes, yeah. I, 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 I they like to. I, I sort of compare it to California high speed rail, which um, was actually approved by voters, substantial portion of voters, not two percent of them. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, that was in 2009, and as of now, in 2022, it is uh, halfway through the first half of the first phase. Um, <laughs> uh, well, like, for instance, cro Crossrail is just going to start running services, I think, this year. So Holy crap. Jesus. <laughs> but this is like... They were just like once that once the fake referendum passed, they were like go go go. Well, go, the go, the, go, the whole go. fucking Mother Earth ceremony that literally no one liked. Uh, they have the people attending had high visibility vests. They were like the, the they had the keys in the fucking caterpillars. Like uh, they were ready to bulldoze the jungle like immediately. I'm surprised they didn't yeah. like break a bottle like of champagne against one of the caterpillars. <laughs> It, it's 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 remarkable just like how no, fast be bad they optics. wanted to get this thing done <laughs> and um amlo has been like uh we got to get this done before 2024 i bought is the thing yeah because he uh, wants it during his time oh yeah, okay. exactly. he, wants, yeah, to, he wants to cut the ribbon while he's still uh still president yeah and that's practically impossible right yeah i well so he's gonna got, fucking like, say he did it and inaugurate like one station to one station we're gonna have Literally marry the Tukankun. You have um you 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 have uh, uh uh like six or seven different construction companies working on this project simultaneously over various sections. Uh, I didn't put the image on for for that unfortunately, but I I, I you you have I think this is somewhere in the northern part of the peninsula. This is one of the towns I think along the existing uh rail line, which as you can see, they just bulldoze straight through. Um, this is actually a highway right of way being converted to a railroad right of way uh, somewhere. Something on the which East would Coast. ordinarily be good. Yeah. Yet. Well, so this is this is the interesting thing because I I think if you're going if you have to build heavy infrastructure in a jungle, a railroad is the best way to do it. Right. I'd, I'd rather sure. have an electric railroad than a highway. You know because it, it's it's going to be quieter. It can handle more people per like meet a square foot of uh, jungle which has been destroyed but one of the issues with this project in particular is that actually especially on the east coast this is a highway project with the train in the middle but, sure. <laughs> oh my excuse, God. excuse me <laughs> yeah, yeah they, don't, they, don't, the they don't talk about this part <laughs> Oh my god, this is, well, first of all, this is like five different accidents waiting to happen, which is very funny. Mm. Uh, but like, oh my god, this is a fucking like one star reviewed uh, City Skylines Workshop mod right here. Yes. If you could have like a, 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 another mod that added just animals constantly getting destroyed, <laughs> yeah. just fucking yeah, just annihilated. Like a red smear of jaguar blood. Like... It already happens, like, driving through Yucatan is just. It, committing butterfly genocide constantly. <laughs> Just your your windshield is opaque by uh, at the end of the drive. 
So oh yeah, my this God. G, they they just like went for higher targets. Like yeah. I think the train is gonna transform into its persona when it like achieves certain <laughs> kill streaks. Like it needs it needs to consume Jaguar blood. <laughs> Tactical noob, tactical noob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate the train powered by Jaguar blood. Yeah. Not, a, uh, not especially efficient, I'll tell you that. No. Well, you know. You're really going to squeeze those things. <laughs> I, I have to put them in my Jaguar juicer. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think the Jaguar is going to make it to the tracks with the highway. And That's the, a good point. <laughs> I don't know, they're fast, right? Like, especially once they're all on that diet, that, uh... <laughs> Those, they're gonna be... Lean Jaguars are just gonna be able to hop over uh, cars, and they're gonna get pasted by the train. That's right, that's right. It's a very funny render, because the bridge back here doesn't connect to anything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it, just if you wanted to go over Is it supposed highway, to be like a, like a wildlife thing? I... If the cars are the oh, wildlife, my... then yes. Oh yeah. shit! Yeah, those, there's cars there. We, we just give the Jaguars cars. That's a good point. Hell yeah! Give Porsche. the Jags a Jag. No, you give them Jag. Oh, give a Jag a Jag. <laughs> uh, especially on like the 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 Cancun side of the project, there's some really highway brained and tourist brained plans. Like the station's going to be at the airport as opposed to somewhere downtown, right? You know, this is uh, not so clear messaging. Is, yeah, that's something which is very um, intended to have uh, some kind of environmental benefit. You know, this is this kind of uh, I don't know. Mm. It's, it's a thing it's, that like, like even, Cancun politicians wanted, and they snuck it in under the auspices of the Tren Maya. Cancun politicians, I assume, have never taken a train before. <laughs> <laughs> well, like here's the thing: like you, you, even now, tourism is really fucking things up. Like. When the pandemic started, I think the first places that got the virus were first Cancun, and then random villages in the middle of the jungle, because oh. that's where they live. That's where the people who work at the hotels do it, yeah. live. Oh, that's fucking grim. And now we're going to have even faster delivery. Hmm. Yes. Well, you see, now now we've come back to the Porfiriato. As a social service, we deliver to your tiny village a rail car full of COVID. Uh, the trade request, we give you, like, fake Maya tourist bullshit made in China. Uh, they, mm -hmm. they already signed that, I think. Like, they already made merch. Oh, you can get, like, a trend Maya t-shirt now if you want? Yeah, cool. like some yeah. fucking Kalakmul uh, made with cheap plastic. And the, the, uh, it, it, it's funny, because, they again, they said we're going to develop the area and give, like, the Mayas jobs so they stop living in teepees, which they don't. Uh, but but, TPs, no. but if, if any of them were like artisans and they made like stuff that tourists actually buy, they're gonna be displaced by some gift shop bullshit at every single station. It's even more green. They're gonna benefit less from tourism. This is literally just for the hotel guys. <sighs> or the Airbnb guys. Yeah. We got here some remember those underground rivers we were talking about? Yes. Uh, this is, oh, uh, there's a Temple of Doom! <laughs> Where is the Temple of Doom? Wait, hold on. Where? Uh, I, I think it's, it? it's not under that name, name but... Uh... Uh, this is a segment of the right-of-way from Tulum, and this goes north to Cancun, and you can see it, it crosses all of these underground rivers and uh, waterways. They're playing Connect is... 4. <laughs> Isn't cast really like a weak rock too? So this is something which is it is a solved problem. It's just difficult. Um mm. because there's there's a highway that already runs through here and the way they handled it was that anywhere it crosses an underground water ray or cave, they just drove a big fucking pile through it. Right? All the way to more solid, you know, bedrock. That's that's a very subtle response. Did that did that fuck with the water table at all? I wonder. Uh, well, it certainly we'll doesn't look that. very good if you like the natural beauty of the uh, cave systems or <laughs> drinking water. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> like all these new hotels are gonna need to get the water from somewhere. Oh man! And so enjoy Why your subtle Nestle you sacred water. 
and yeah, especially and of like course a whole bunch hmm. of these a uh, whole bunch of these towns are expected to um double their population because of this project um so they're going to need a lot more water well mm -hmm. Hmm. Um, be right back. I'm going to start a desalinator business. Oh my god! <sighs> well, Which, I mean, you're you're going to need it after fucking climate change means that by the time they finish this, the sea levels, you know, two feet higher. And I I put this slide towards the end, uh, but we talked about it a lot already. The army is going to be in charge of this whole damn thing. Yes. <laughs> They're going to own it. They're going to get all of the ticket revenues from it. Yes. Um, and basically there's going to be a bunch of, a bunch of uh, military bases on Mexico's southern border, which means that they can abuse migrants coming from Guatemala better. It also means they can fuck with the Zapatistas better, should they choose to, which of course they will. Also, yes. they're, uh, they're going to resettle those, uh, those migrants. Yep. That's, why, that's where the, the, uh, the, the two-fold increase in population is going to come from. Yeah, instead of instead of like going north to the United States, you are now conscripted to work in a hotel in Cancun. And you know, yeah. everyone knows that if, that if you live in a village and you're promised progress and uh, more electricity and plumbing, and suddenly you're inundated with uh, people from another country, that doesn't make any kind of social repercussions. There's of not. There's not gonna be like five different new types of racism invented there, like. Gonna have to invent new slurs for Salvadorans. Yeah, they're already hard at work there, <laughs> so... <laughs> uh, but that's God mostly just happening in Tijuana. Like, this is, yeah, this is, this is, this is so is, depressing. Uh, okay, okay, we gotta have an optimistic slide. What, 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 what are, in a, in a better world, in an in ideal better, world... In a better world, in a better world we have to go up to, uh, of course, Newfoundland and Labrador. Mm. Yay. Um, <laughs> That looks like an actual train. So, like, you know, what's what's the alternative here? Like, I, 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 if you if you think that, like, okay, we should have better transportation alternatives, but also we shouldn't have this top down situation. What do you do? I, I and I always like to point out uh, to shoot and rail transportation uh, as you know the alternative. This is a one hundred percent indigenous owned railroad. In um, Ooh. in Newfoundland and Labrador, where the tribes who were served by the train simply uh, they bought the railroad and operated themselves now, because the iron ore company that built it didn't want it anymore. Mm. So, <laughs> so now you have like a hundred percent like indigenous zone railroad, which is operated by and owned by its customers. You know, it's it's uh, the people who rely on it. <laughs> that's you that know. that's that's your communist yeah. railroad. That's one possibility. Yeah. The other is we simply go back, we return, if you will, to the anarchist railroad, and Yay. everybody gets one of those fucking Alstom units, and they can just pick it up off the tracks wherever they want. Uh, and we just go, we just go back to tramways. I. I can't lift something that heavy, Alice. I yes, you can. I get, you, get a you, get a jack, get a like a, a dolly or whatever. I think I need. I I I, I will rely on scheduled services. <laughs> <laughs> and like the 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 trains are good. Meme is there for a reason, right? And maybe yes. like if if they wanted a train, they could have said like. I, I really think that if they had made an actual uh, like, do you want a train? I don't think it would have passed, honestly, because it would have gotten like replies like, "Who the fuck asked for this?" Like, it's and the the only way they got a, lo a lot of yeses on that uh, children's card was promising that they're gonna they were gonna electrify and put plumbing and and shit. And they and no one was allowed to ask, "What if we just get the infrastructure? Why do we need the fucking trainer?" Right, right. Because and because they would. Presumably, in in have a little bit more control over that than if it's owned by the fucking army. No, only the army. Yeah. That's the only thing we can do. It has, right. has to be the army. <laughs> oh my god, this has depressed the absolute shit out of me. It's very. <laughs> it's very, it, it, it is very dumb. It's it's a. It's very, so dumb. It was a bad idea. Yeah, when when I, I learned about it in 2018, I was not a fan. 
and even even beyond like uh like yeah i'm i'm a Zapatista supporter and they were not fans either because they smelled this shit from a thousand miles away and uh but it's gotten progressively stupider as as it has gone on like it's there's no the when the electric and when the green part of it passed we had to like throw away all our fucking green fascism memes we had to and just go back to well that's clearly a stupid fucking train but <laughs> <laughs> you don't even have to go into the next level of this person have to talk about internal colonialism and like eco-fascism and, sh- and shit like that we just gotta point at it and laugh because it's a terrible project it's a it's a it's a weird it's it's just a weird project in a weird location and yeah i, I, I you know, when I first heard of it, it was probably, I don't know, 2019. And the first thing I thought was, hey, this seems like a pretty good train. And then, they, like, the more I've learned about it, I'm like, wow, this is really bad. It's a really <laughs> bad idea. <laughs> I'm just, I wonder how it's going to get worse. Because, like, when this is completed, you know, it's not going to get better, right? No. Like, there's no fucking way. No. So, so I, I think the, the worst case scenario is they don't actually wind up running any trains. Which so means that's just the most military likely bases? scenario. Yeah, but it just winds up being military Shit. bases yeah. shaped like train stations. <laughs> yeah, with a bunch of like high rails with guys with M4s on them going back and forth. So yeah, basically they just make, they let the austerity and the private companies break. They keep the, the army around and maybe in 2035 they rescue it with like Chinese capital and make bigger freight trains to compete with the Panama Canal. Right. Maybe. Yeah. Fuck. Right. Fantastic. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> that fucking I, success. I will go on the record as saying I don't think any railroad can compete with the Panama Canal because they have tried many times in the past and it's been a disaster show every time. Um, well, I mean, that's that's no reason not to try it again. <laughs> uh, this is true. <laughs> I mean, um, we can always, we and we can't even do the the classic Suez Canal thing of just jamming something in there. Uh, <laughs> you know something funny? Yellow fever. No one ever sabotaged Porfirio Diaz trains in Yucatan. Huh? They floated hmm. around the idea, but they said, "Nah, let's just cut the phone lines." <laughs> because we also <laughs> use the 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 the, the, the tram tracks for our anarchist railroad shit. Right. But who the fuck is going to use this? To, to like two tourists and then I don't know. <sighs> if, you, if you had good freight service. Uh one of the weird things about uh the railway to the Yucatan is that there's no there's there's no container service for instance. So if you if you ran something out of per, at to Progreso where there is a container terminal, that would make a lot of sense to me and you know, you would move a lot of freight that way. But that's not part of the project, which is one of the weirdest things to me, um, is that they're not even thinking about... They're, they're, freight seems to be an afterthought, um, which is weird because, you know, they're, they're running so little passenger service for the amount of money they're investing. And there's so um, much fucking money, and, and some of them hasn't even been spent. It was just in the budget from previous years, and no one know, knows where the fuck that budget is. It's... That's I, called anti-corruption. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I, 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 well, you know, the project got delivered very quickly and it turned out it was useful for nobody. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. It's such a fucking bummer. And the, the, the only other project that AMLO's also doing uh, is a giant refinery uh, called Dos Bocas. <laughs> right. <laughs> Fantastic. So you can see why they didn't like, they didn't mind that much just eating the fucking electric part. Because in Campeche, which is next to the states that are going to have the, the, the train, there's going to be just a giant pumping station uh, that, where we're going to finally refine our own oil instead of, which, okay, granted, selling oil to the US and then buying it back is incredibly fucking stupid, right? Yes. But if you're if you were the first like leftist candidate elected in billion years, and your plan is like doing some fucking internal colonialism and then just fucking the environment a little bit more efficiently, I guess it's just such a fucking downer. I mean, at least like at least we were spared seeing this happen with Corbyn and with Bernie, you know. 
That's the thing that because uh, it would have. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, but I even I think Bernie would have had it a little bit harder. Like, this is like if if you ever see that fucking uh, image ra- thrown around uh, in, uh, Gringo Twitter uh, leftists that's just high speed rails and uh, people saying, "Oh, I'm coming just by looking at this." Oh, and the uh, uh, Alfred Twu image. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, uh, and yeah. <laughs> I, I, I superimposed that image over the reservations, and there's a couple ones, but this is like if you purposely try to just run through all of them, just connect every single reservation, and not put stations, just demolish shit. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think Bernie would have had it a little bit harder fucking this up. I don't know what would happened in the UK. Probably like somehow more transphobic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They would hire the same guy from here. <laughs> <laughs> the trend bindle. <laughs> oh my fucking god. Well, oh, what have we learned? Be extremely yeah. depressed. Be train extremely bad. Depre- I, I would say, I would say train better than car, but not necessarily good. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Consider maybe as part of a degrowth thing asking whether you should build the thing. <sighs> now that's a whole set of discourse. Right yeah, there. which I'm just going yeah, just hash that out in the comments. Yeah, yeah, hash that out in the comments. I'm not talking about degrowth right now. Yeah, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. <laughs> okay, what but, are we but talking I, about I will right say now? something that every single time so there's degrowth discourse, they, everyone is trying to like keep, uh, I don't know, to, to find a compromise. Always say, it says, Oh, but we have to let like third world countries like keep growing, and because because otherwise we're doing an imperialism and a green imperialism, and just look at these kinds of things all over the place. Because yeah, the the we're not we don't have like the the, the third world is not governed by a billion fidels like <laughs> no. So and even like there's development uh, critiques of of Evo who's. Even the Evo's doing the way, way cooler things that Amlo's gonna fucking do with this. Like, at least selling fucking lithium is gonna benefit someone. Like, this Jesus, this doesn't seem to be useful at all. There's no defensible way, even from bad leftist positions, to, to just say this is cool. It's just bad. And that's depressing. So and on that note, on that note, you want to do safety third? Before let's I, do safety before third. I jump let's do safety third. <laughs> <laughs> Shake hands for danger. Good evening. Wow. Uh, greetings, <laughs> Mr. Chopper. I formerly worked in a rides operations department. You're, you're going to do the Fauntle Row voice the whole time? At an unnamed major American <laughs> park. <laughs> Until the end of the 2020 season, I spent most of my time during the summer operating a so-called water coaster. Where oh, like ride- a log flame. Yeah. No. No, water no, they're coaster. Different. They're different. Okay. Where riders seated in yeah, the Yeah, Alice, you dumb idiot. <laughs> a water coaster, Alice, at least uh, what I would call one, is... A roller coaster that also has water features, so you sort of get sprayed down. Oh, okay. Different than a log see. flume. Okay. Oh, you can see they, they've done it very intelligently here, because you can see at the top of the hill, they go to a enclosed section, just like in Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. That means you don't fly off. <laughs> <laughs> so where riders seated in linear rafts that can accommodate up to four people traverse a large-scale slide with many turns and drops. This ride had its fair share of safety issues, and I've come prepared to detail them to you. Thank you. Perfect. As a preface to this story, ride faults are a part of normal operations at amusement parks, and usually the ride will fault to prevent a potentially unsafe situation from occurring. Rides have many redundancies to protect guests and ensure safe operation. I I choose not to believe this. I won't go on a roller coaster because that shit's trying to kill me. Allison, are you not I, I are agree you, with you. You're um, fucking pathetic, both of you. <laughs> I'm listen, just too fat ju- for the ju- roller coaster. Just, <laughs> Justin and I will be down here at the fucking like bullshit rides. Thank Have you. Have you tried building them over the Temple of Doom? <laughs> <laughs> that surely will help with security and safety. 
<laughs> yeah, but this roller coaster is actually run by the army. <laughs> Ask, uh, ask former podcast guest Tom Coletti about his Coney Island experience. I was oh, there yeah. watching. <laughs> so, rides have many redundancies to protect guests and ensure safe operation, just like any piece of heavy equipment you would find at a job site. Okay, now I understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just we don't use those. Yeah. However, this story involves incidents that cannot be detected through a mechanical safety system therefore increasing the risk of an unsafe environment. Overall, though, every ride that you would find in an amusement park has been inspected and met rigorous safety standards. I don't believe you. Mm -hmm. Now, in fairness, the one in Coney Island was not part of an amusement park. It, it was a standalone roller coaster. It's just a guy. It's just a guy with a roller coaster. <laughs> the, 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 the entrance, was the ticket uh, holder strangely disappeared after you entered. <laughs> <laughs> in the case of this ride, you can see in the slide that the raft traverses a gentle incline, which I assume this is the lift hill, right? Um, then makes a turn into a rather steep drop before ascending another incline. Oh. Right, yes. The rafts make it up the incline by a magnetic propulsion system contained in the slide and the raft. Why even have water? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I appreciate the water maglev. Yes. The propulsion system by itself was usually reliable and functioned the way it was intended to. However, the drops after the incline were not as fortunate. The right had four drops, and in drops two and four, the rafts would travel with enough speed that the front half of the raft became airborne for a split second before fully making contact with the slide again. No, don't like that. Don't want to do that. Don't want to do that. Let Liam's just like, yes, perfect. Yeah. Let it be known that these rafts do not have seat belts, and instead, <laughs> riders are required to hold on to grab handles located to their left and right. I'm with Alice. Don't do like that. Do they also have a ring of fire in one of those? <laughs> you got to uh, through getting, it. Getting major uh, Schlitterbahn uh, vibes off of this one. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's a future episode. Um, <laughs> We're going to do Action Park. Stop fucking emailing yeah. us. <laughs> this proved effective in keeping riders securely inside the raft during the moments of airtime, but when the raft hit the valley, it would sometimes act as a trampoline and bounce the rider seated in the back seat out of the boat and into the fiberglass slide. The yeah, physics is so cool. I have personally observed this happen, but fortunately, in my case, the rider involved was unharmed. Next slide, please. You can't next slide please us on our podcast. That's yeah, Justin's line. It, dickhead. It's okay, I... I, 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 I I let them do it Emma, once. please say next slide, please. <laughs> wait, wait, I haven't read this one. <laughs> Unfortunately, Wait, Ross, did you say next slide, please? I did say next slide, please. Ross, you control the put. What? Uh, well, that's that's what they wrote. Oh, that's what they oh, wrote. And oh, anything, oh. anything you write, Justin will read. Sorry, that's I'm trying to figure. Out, I'm trying to figure out our taxes, uh, Ross. That, so that's uh, not true. I gave them one next slide, please. But I'm not doing the next one because I can no, put both of these no. into the same slide. There are three next slides, please, in this particular safety what? third. So Jesus. MA can do the next one, but not, okay. not this one. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, not all guests involved in similar incidents got off so well. Shown as a lawsuit retrieved using publicly available information showing what happened when a guest who experienced the trampoline effect did not leave unharmed. Which is redacted started operating at redacted on or about I love May 26, to operate redacted. 2018. From the date redacted started operating until July 19th, 2018, at least three patrons were thrown from the ride. Whoops. On or about July 19th, 2018, the plaintiff with her family was on the redacted ride. As she was riding, she it's was a CIA the themed air. ride. Yeah, they call it the this? water border. It's what? actually it's <laughs> act <laughs> Listen, waterboarding sounds cool if you don't know what it is. Yeah. It's uh the two things that sound like summer camp activities, waterboarding and freebasing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, waterboarding at Guantanamo Bay. Sounds fucking great. Sign me up. All part of the 
uh, the reality TV series American Gladio. <laughs> <laughs> Was yeah, you up. can blow up a train station <laughs> with this pole with the two things on the end. <laughs> that is one thing I failed to mention in the uh, Nationales, the Mexico slide, was the massive station rebuilding program in the uh, late 70s and early 80s, which pr produced all these great mid-century modern train stations, which were immediately abandoned after they were finished. Anyway. God damn it. <laughs> Embarrassing. So, on or about July 19, 2018, the plaintiff with her family was on the redacted ride. As she was riding, she was thrown into the air. Since she was holding on, she was violently pulled back into the raft. When the plaintiff was pulled back into the raft, she slammed her body and was in, was an immediate, was in immediate pain. <laughs> was an immediate pain. Yeah, 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 she was really irritating. <laughs> <laughs> the plaintiff was taken from the ride on a backboard and was taken to hospital by ambulance. Anyway. Several attempts were made to change operating procedures to prevent this from happening, mostly by establishing seating guidelines which involved weight-based rider arrangements and closing off the back seat of the raft. Faster people only. Yes. Thank you. These it's were good, mostly successful, but reverted at the beginning of the next season for whatever reason. They were filled with jaguars. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they were term limited. <laughs> The ride continued operating without any mechanical safety modifications for another year. But during the next season, more trampoline effect incidents occurred, and once the season was over, the decision was made to modify Drop 4 to have a more drawn-out transition to the valley. After Time. being closed for a year, this refurbishment... After only being open for two seasons, the ride reopened 2021 with new and improved seating guidelines and a safer Drop 4. Next slide, please. I'm not changing the slide because... No, you put it on this one. Because I put it on this one. As shown in slow motion on this slide, which is the second half of this slide, um, <laughs> Drop 2 still has its original steep descents, which provi provides the same level of airtime as it did previously. But, to my knowledge, because of the new seating guidelines, no further injuries have occurred. Okay, Emma, say next slide, please. Uh, the next slide, please. Please. <laughs> Gotcha. Thank you, Emma. We gotta start letting the guests say next slide, please. It's, it's, it's like That's a little I'm yeah. doing it yeah. last. My connection's not great right now, so I, I cannot read a single fucking word. So I really <laughs> depended on that instruction, I always think. Yeah. <laughs> Lastly, one of the consequences, the constant issues with this ride is that management required operators to stand on the platform next to each of the valleys of the ride Right here. Oh, the little like zipline thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, a little platform there. Uh, these were referred to as the zones. Yeah, the Each YouTube the... zone. The, the I don't know, man. It's just, we've been recording a long time. <laughs> Each of the five Ooh. zones was equipped with an emergency stop and a shade umbrella. If you were assigned to this ride. You'd have the unfortunate task of standing at the zone and watching each raft pass through to make sure that it did so safely. This was your okay. sole duty. However, the possibility exists for rafts to not make it completely up the incline and come to rest in the valley. In addition, operators in the station have the potential to not correctly follow the seating guidelines and let the raft proceed into the ride course with improperly seated guests. In case one of these issues occurred, you would press the emergency stop button if the ride had not already faulted and stopped itself. As unreliable as it was, most days the ride would not have any faults and render the task of operators to simply stand at the zone for up to one to three hours in up to 100 degree weather. I just, this has got to be Schlitterbahn. Uh, <laughs> with just an umbrella for shade. That's not our show. The lack of seating is due to a belief by the audit department that sitting down reduces awareness. That's not true. <laughs> they they got a standing how... desk. <laughs> you can imagine how enjoyable a responsibility like this would be these conditions are part of the reason I left this job but it did create plenty of fun stories that I can now tell to the pod and his listeners w w was this one of them? <laughs> well it's a very unsafe ride that's true so, yes. That's true. well thank you for sending in safety third where do I hit the fucking safety third thing? Hey. Uh, Shake hands for danger. Our 
next episode is on the Boston molasses disaster. Oh, oh, oh I'm so hype. <laughs> Thank you. Prepare to be crushed. Does anyone, um, anyone have some? Uh, yeah, MA. If, if people want more MA, where can they find you? Okay, they can find me in my new Twitter account, uh, MA Aki Flores. And uh, they can listen to my podcast, uh, Fresapatistas, which means like it's kind of a mash of calling someone like bougie or uh, posh and, uh, and Zapatista. It's, it used to be an insult and. Uh, we're taking it back. We're reclaiming the <laughs> Fresa Batista lore. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's a podcast about leftist uh, Mexican discourse. You know, we it's a pretty niche genre. There's not a lot of competition. And uh, cause, we'll, put, we'll put a link to it in the description. Yes. Yeah, thank you so much for coming on and like lending your expertise. It was my pleasure. Uh, totally. uh, when I, I'm glad we we... It's a long episode. We're not nowhere close. My favorite episode. That's the Hindenburg yeah. one. Uh, <laughs> but I, I actually searched for the Boston thing, uh, and I didn't yeah. find it. I was kind of bummed. I'm excited to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody Emma, tell him. Emma, your podcast is in Spanish, right? Yep. And we're gonna okay. probably like uh, try to translate some of the cool parts uh, we said here uh, after we plug it, because we we try to. Uh, I am terminally uh, online and incredibly gotcha. gringo poisoned. So, <laughs> please, listen, I live in Mexico City and I know about DSA drama. What the fuck is wrong with me? What the fuck is wrong with me? Why, why can't I make a perfect imitation of Keith Starmer? There's something wrong with me. So uh, we 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 I'm have so to consciously sorry that we always be fucking brain disease. Oh, it's, wait, listen, yeah. So <laughs> you can right, if you want to get all the the spicy uh, leftist memes uh, and understand just the, the stupidest parts of Mexican politics. You can turn into fresapatistas con crema. Absolutely, do that. If you only speak English, I recommend you donde esta, your local biblioteca. <laughs> no, go. what you should do is you should subscribe to the podcast and like do yeah. immersion learning. There you go, yeah. yeah. There's a couple there of people who, who said they do that, and I'm like, I'm so sorry, we're, we're constantly just using Mexico City slang, and that's, you should not learn Spanish by listening to Mexico, Mexico City slang, slang, it's just barely above learning Spanish Spanish. Like... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So yeah, L listen to my, my podcast and uh, <laughs> listen to. I, I, I'm I'm hyped for the Boston one. <laughs> Thank you All so right. much for having me. Oh no, problem. absolute it's pleasure great to have you on. All uh, right, I'm stopping my local recording. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, we're going. Oh, we're gonna do shout outs. No. Uh, uh, oh wait, wait, yeah, yeah. It's mm. fine. Ten thousand mm. losses. Kill James Bond. Trash future. Of uh, lions led by donkeys. Um. Subscribe so, to our Patreon for when it, the NASCAR I'm, episode goes up. I'm also oh, hyped for Sky for, for for the, the, the James Bond movie that's in Mexico City. Oh Ooh. yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, All right. Did did you 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 are gonna talk about how they invented a tradition, right? Oh yeah, we're absolutely uh, gonna talk about that. All right. All right. Bye everyone. Podcast. Yeah. Bye. Uh, off Vita Zen. <laughs>